<laughs> Literally over the last week, I've seen Batman versus Superman. Then I saw fucking the Justice awful. League shit. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going back in time and catching up to all this Dude, why are you watching the DC movies after the universe got canceled? You're just watching all these shit movies for no reason. Bro, it's up late at night. It's like 2, 3 a.m. I ain't got shit to do. Bro, go to sleep. I can't sleep. Bro, it's been Ramadan for like 30 days and Moses just trying to make it harder for himself. Like, he's just (laughs) watching the worst movies known to man. Well, I personally was having a great time. He's running towards the spiritual grind. (laughs) If you love those, you're going to be fucking mind blown by Marvel. Marvel. It's a million. Batman v Superman is like the worst fucking movie ever. That shit is horrible. <laughs> it was interesting. Season. You're gonna you're gonna watch Age of Ultron, Avengers, and you're gonna be like, oh my god, it's cinema. <laughs> He's gonna watch Thor four and be like, this is so much better than DC. Oh my god. <laughs> Why didn't I start here? No, dead ass. Honestly, I think I'm gonna do Marvel next year for sure. You say next year, <laughs> but yeah. start now. Stop wasting your nights. Not fucking year. starting now. Stop Fuck wasting no. your nights. This is only a Ramadan type of event. <laughs> what? When I got shit. When I got. When I don't got shit else to do. It's two, three a.m. Tired of watching YouTube videos or whatever, and I need something to. You act like you're not gonna be up at two, three a.m. for the next like six months. Not consistently. That's the issue. You also could just during the during the daytime. <laughs> That's <laughs> that's and that's so. If watching full movies during the day is major loser material, bro. I've watching never done movies that. is loser material. What no, the during fuck are you the day, day, during the day, who does that? He said, uh, "Yeah, the as world a, is- as a man, you should never watch movies during the day. Like, <laughs> when the sun you is should out? be out at a job making money. Like, <laughs> <laughs> during the day, it's crazy as fuck. Why are you a man of leisure to where you can watch higher. multiple films in a day?" That's crazy. <laughs> movie during the day is weird. That's hilarious. That's an absurd thing to say. What What are you What are you doing from sundown to like midnight? Watching basketball, like a real man. What the fuck? <laughs> this is absurd. What about the off season? What about the off season? He does push ups. <laughs> That's what he does. Six yeah, hours do. of push ups a night. Dips. <laughs> oh man, dips. <laughs> <laughs> he does dips all do night. Dips. <laughs> yeah. He's just <laughs> curling <laughs> gallons of milk. <laughs> 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 this is hella diamond push-ups. <laughs> oh my god, bro! <laughs> diamond push-ups is madness. That is crazy as fuck. You know, I, I'm I'm keeping this as the intro. <laughs> Welcome to the newest episode. <laughs> Mo doesn't <Wow>. watch movies. <laughs> Not proud. during the day. Oh, Not goodness. during the day. Oh, no man. sir. It's such a loser <laughs> take. <laughs> Today we are doing <laughs> our final power rankings of the season. <laughs> Oh my and god. It's gonna be a special power rankings because we are doing it playoff specific. It's gonna be the top 20 teams <laughs> through the play in each finish. Nikhil's dying and this is fucking me up. <sighs> Let's get serious. Oh my god. We're doing our final power rankings of the season. <laughs> it is playoff specific. This time we're gonna be projecting to who we think are the best teams in the NBA going into the playoffs, you know, who will fare best in the playoff settings, not necessarily who's had the best seasons. So it's going to be an interesting one. And that's something we've done in the past. We've, in the past, we've kind of focused on what they proved to us. Now it's all theoretical. This is an open. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is an open. Going from this to like basketball talk, That's this is a transition. I'm going to have to like lock in for a second. <laughs> I'm going to have to be quiet <laughs> so for like 30 exciting. seconds. But if you guys didn't watch the live stream we did a couple of days ago, we did our TD3 award show where we picked all NBA awards, did all, all NBA teams, uh, all defense, all that stuff. Great stream. I'd really recommend watching that to, you know, get our view of what we think of the MVP race, the defensive player of the year race, all that stuff. Go watch that first. 100%. I 110% agree. You're also in for a good one. We debate cereals uh, uh, sometime in that stream too as well. Very passionate debate. <laughs> Iconic TD3 moment. Check our Twitter. Check our Instagram. I posted a clip of it. Hilarious. Donovan was very passionate about anti-cinnamon toast crunch agendas. Somebody has to say the truth. Right. Like, I feel like we live in a culture. Everybody just wants to tiptoe. The truth needs to be said. You know what I'm saying? And I'm here for that. <laughs> the cranium is crazy. Oh, my God. I mean, I don't really don't know, don't know what to say. Crayon eaters rejoice. Before we start the final power rankings of the season, we're going to start with the new opening segment to every episode. Comment of the day. Woo. As you guys know, I asked you to comment your favorite question, your favorite hot take, whatever it may be. And every week, we're going to respond to one of your comments and really dive deep into it. Today, we have a comment from Samuel Johnson, 4585. 
He says, now that the season is winding down, who do y'all think is going to be on the coaching carousel this summer? Whose job is the most in jeopardy? So I picked this question. Ooh, Basically, okay. who do you think is getting fired? Who is losing their job after this playoff run? Who's tapping in with Indeed.com? <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to be on LinkedIn open to work? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who's the first uh, that comes to mind? There's a few. There's a few I'm thinking of. Darvin Ham. Uh, wow. Yeah, he's he's on there. Do what does Darvin Ham have to do to keep his job? I, I feel like he's, he's the most hated finals, coach right now. Conference finals. Conference finals again? Yeah. Yeah. You, you what have, if they make the conference finals and get blasted by the Nuggets again? Is that enough to save him? Uh, yeah, because I mean, I think, I feel like everybody in the league is like, Hey man, it's it's the Nuggets, right? If you lose to them, then you lose to them. So a loss to them, regardless if it's a sweep or not, is fine. And they they got swept last year by the Nuggets, so it's not like it's anything new or embarrassing. It's just what they do. So if they can get to the conference finals, he might be safe. Um, mm. But he's the first name that mm. yeah he he's he's gonna be on somebody's bench if he's not at, at the top of the Lakers bench next year. Yeah, I not, think. Mm. There's very few scenarios where I think he should keep his job. I think the entire reason the Lakers are struggling this season and are currently the nine seed mm. is almost entirely his fault. You know, what we're going to talk about them, obviously, when we get to the power rankings. They've been a fantastic team as of late. They're actually not fantastic. That's me not guessing. But they've been a good team. And it coincides exactly with him playing D'Lo, Austin Reeves, and Rui in the starting lineup and being serious and playing his best players. The only reason they are bad is because they didn't do it all year. And he overthought the shit out of it and played ridiculous lineups for a big chunk of the season. You can direct if they get eliminated the play in, you can directly correlate it to being Darvin Ham's fault. I think he's cooked. Yeah. Wow. I would say so as well. Well, okay. who do you think's in fired? I think if me personally, if I was to lean any certain way, I think not it's not that I think this player this person would get fired. I just feel like all signs point towards that. JB Bickerstaff's name probably gonna be yeah. up there earlier in the season, like he was catching the most heat and the most hell. Do I think it's fair? Yeah. To a certain extent, yeah, but every single fan in the in the entire NBA has beef with their head coach unless you're like an OKC fan or I guess yeah. like the Miami Heat or some shit like that. So with all the inconsistencies in that roster and just like all the volatility that's been going on in and out, I think his name is probably cooked because he hasn't done enough in my mind to help, you know, maintain that identity. And part of that, a large part of that is the coach's fault. Yeah. yeah. The Cavs are a fucking... Tire fire. Again, we'll talk about them come power rankings time. We'll talk about them a lot. I will be shocked if JB Bickerstaff is still on this team next year. <clears throat> Facts. All right, I got I got two names for you. One, Chauncey Billups. Listen, might have to go back to ESPN. I think it's time. <laughs> I, I think it's time for, for Chauncey Billups to get up out of Portland. And I don't know if it's gonna be a firing or if it's gonna be like mutual parting of ways. I I would be kind of shocked if Billy Donovan was the coach of the Bulls next year. I was going to say that too. Yeah. It doesn't seem that he's on the hot seat like you said, but like, what are they doing? Like, why does he even want to, I mean, I'm sure he wants a job. He wants to get money, you know, so it makes sense. But like, what is the goal for either side there? Yeah, I think, I think like for them, they clearly have uh, some type of love for this core. Nobody knows why. And this core is going to be together until they're not. And so the only change or like the sign that they're going to give the fans is, hey, we're going to, you know, move on from Billy Donovan, bring in somebody new and see if he can really unlock this core, especially after Kobe White and has his like breakout season. Plus, mm -hmm. there's there's been some talk about Billy Donovan going to Kentucky, right? His name has kind of been thrown around in there after Coach Cal left. So I could see a situation Bro. where he goes back to the college ranks and then they bring in somebody new. He would be the second Chicago Bulls head coach to like leave from the pros to go back to college. Remember Fred Hoidberg? What a name. I forgot about Fred Hoidberg. Wow. I don't know a single defining characteristic of Fred Hoidberg. I don't remember a thing about his tenure there. I mean, he's white and he looks like he works in corporate America. That's all I could tell you. Well, that doesn't tell <laughs> me much. He's an NBA like, coach. <laughs> it's a lot of white people. <laughs> so does Billy Donovan. <laughs> Billy Donovan would be a fantastic COO just based off looks. That's a, that's a sales manager <laughs> if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Someone who it. I think should get fired also, but probably wouldn't because he just signed like a two-year deal or whatever it was, is Doc Rivers. We can Again, Bucks, there's going to be plenty to talk about him later, but I'm just like, <laughs> what's the point of bringing him back, you know? Yeah, well, it, if you decide he was a good coach to hire, then there's no reason to fire him now. You might as well give him a full season to have an actual, like, you know, off-season to build around his vision. 
they, they they're, they're stuck with him. If they just keep giving coaches half years to prove that that they're <laughs> like, be crazy, the coach would be hilarious. <laughs> they pay five coaches at once just because they keep running through them. <laughs> <laughs> Hella contracts. Yeah. So yeah, that's, right, that's, I think that's all the main names. So is that that's five? Of the day, you know, something like that. Just, listen, there's always surprise ones. Nobody yeah. thought Mike Budenholzer was getting fired. He seemed to be one of the safest coaches in the league. They flamed out in the playoffs. He was out of there. That could happen to any which coach this year. I don't know if that can actually happen to a lot of coaches this year because what Jeez, team has like real deal expectation? Oh, Jason Kidd. If the Dallas Mavericks flame out, mm. immediately get oh, yeah. fired, bro. If he's a first he's round, they, they lose in the first fired. round. He is cooked. He is yeah. unemployment line immediately. Fired as fuck. He, I think he is one of the few coaches in the NBA who's like, all right, bro. Like if you underperform in the playoffs this year, <laughs> you're getting that two weeks notice. Frank Vogel. There's a report uh, today that his job may be on the line, which that's if they lose in the play in. He shouldn't be scapegoated again, but if they lose in the play in, you got to change something and they're stuck with the score. So I wouldn't be shocked. If I was Frank mm. Vogel and I got scapegoated again, I'd be like, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm going to college. Like, I'm just not dealing <laughs> yeah. with these guys ever again. Exactly. <laughs> I'm taking, taking a job of the rebuilding team with no expectations because apparently if I don't win a championship, I'm just bad at my job. Yeah. Good coach the Hornets. Yeah. That's, uh, fucking, that's fucking gross, bro. Who Someone else who. Uh, Detroit Pistons coach Monty Williams. He he's not. He's he, not. He's, he's signed the richest contract in coaching history so far, right? Yeah. <sighs> he's they're, not. Going they're going to give. They're like, going to give him two years on on that deal at least before they consider yeah. like firing him. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that's an interesting conversation about coaches losing their jobs. <laughs> interesting con- <laughs> coach conversation about unemployment. <laughs> oh at, at first, at first, <laughs> at first, I thought I was like. Oh, like there's probably only like three coaches, and then we just listed like eight guys who could lose their I job know. this offseason. Yeah, <laughs> we just NBA teams love dogs. firing coaches. It's, there's always the grass is always greener with these teams. People love yeah. it. Yeah, last year we went through like a fucking crazy ass frenzy with this shit, and people were just firing coaches as if like they grow on trees. And I guess apparently they do because not a lot of coaches' jobs are on the line, or at least it's not a lot of not a lot compared to like last year or whatever. But again, the playoffs change a lot. We didn't know some of these jobs would be available until they were. That is Nick true. Nurse got fired. <laughs> Who thought Nick Fuck. Nurse would get fired? That's crazy. You're right. Nick Nurse did get fired. That was a disgusting move still like, to this Nick day. Nick Nurse and Budenholzer, if we ranked the top 10 coaches in the league, they would both be in there as locks last year. And they both got fired. Okay. A I, lot of it too. I don't, I don't think that the like, Bud thing was too crazy though. Mm. No, I mean, it, it made more sense. But, you know, it was yeah. still shocking. Like, we knew that it was, the when they did it, it was like, all right, I get it. But I don't think anybody predicted it. It was more shocking. Mm. I think it was more shocking that they pulled the trigger on it rather than yeah. the actual idea that like he was fired, you know? Yeah, it, it made sense. The logic, you got to make something up. But like most coaches in his situation would have been safer than that. Mm. They fired him. I, it was it was shocking that they fired him and they traded Drew Holiday. Because no, yeah. normally like you think that you just make one massive change up and that's it. They they changed up everything. So that's the that's the big move from them. That's crazy. Whole world. And they got poor, Doc Rivers. Poor, poor. <sighs> Tough right, scene for the Bucks, but we can go ahead and move on. Crayon yep. Eaters, welcome to one of the newest segments in TD3. Started doing this like three weeks ago, I believe. Fourth week in a row. Welcome to Moment of the Week. Where today Ooh. we go ahead and Look back of what ha- look back and see what happened in the NBA over the past seven days since we last recorded. And today's moment of the week is Paul George hitting a game winner against the Cleveland Cavaliers, specifically step backing Evan Mobley out of his Achilles, <laughs> dropping him and hitting a right elbow two pointer with seven seconds left to go on a clock. Now, yes, it might be a fake game winner. But still, in terms of Paul George, what he's been known for to do in the clutch for the entirety of his NBA career, this is a pretty nice highlight. What do you guys think about this? What do you mean, fake game winner? They it wasn't the game. like a buzzer. Be- it wasn't like a buzzer beater. Oh, I like hate whenever, that. People, whenever someone thinks that. about game winner and shit like that, then they think about, they think about it like a real life buzzer beater. Why? We, I remember we did a, we did a tier list of game winners, and people were like, "This isn't a buzzer beater; it doesn't count." Why does it matter if there's half a second left? I'd never understood that. The excitement factor, that's why that's that's what matters the most. I mean, they went up. I, mean, it was a, I, I get excited as fuck. It's a go-ahead bucket that <laughs> eventually turns into the game winner. Like, he did it. Yeah. Because it's Paul I mean, George. Good for Paul George. You know, these two teams are floundering. Good for the Clippers getting a winner of their belt. They obviously need the positive momentum going into the postseason. They have had none of it over the past month. As, and especially as a team that we saw as the second biggest threat in the conference at one point. Yeah. Good for them that they can have a good moment. 
I will say, yeah. I saw this. I saw the slow motion like video of this clip, and the social media like branding for Paul George is so strong because it, there was no audio, but I heard Erica Badu in my head whenever I was watching <laughs> it in slow motion, and I was like, okay, That's like I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I see the appeal, I, I see it. Like yeah. that, that was kind of tough. Yeah, That's Paul George has had a good past couple of weeks after being kind of stinky for his standards for a couple months or so. But Clippers fans were like. You know, every team, when they struggle, they pick somebody to pinpoint the blame on. Yeah. A lot of Clippers fans are pointing the blame at Paul George for some reason. I, he needs to carry good momentum going into the postseason the most. Because Kawhi's going to be Kawhi. James Harden's going to be James Harden, for better or worse. Paul George needs to be rock steady. Especially, Is Kawhi going to be Kawhi? I don't know, because we haven't seen we'll see. Kawhi like at all, point blank, period. And if Kawhi is not even on the court, then I think they're just a cook case, bro. Well, yeah, yeah obviously. But assuming his knee injury isn't serious. I think we can safely say he'll play like Kawhi Leonard in the playoffs. And don't forget, Paul George, we have that video of you saying, where's Paul at, though? We have that. And, and I promise you, people are waiting to use it. You better show up. He has to show up. Yeah. That's him. hilarious. Right? It's on the way. Anyways, I, I have thoughts about the Cavs. We'll save it. Let's get to the power rankings because we're going to talk about them plenty. So like I said in the intro, we're tier right now. Really. So like I said in the intro, Power ranking all the NBA playoff teams, which essentially means the top 20 teams. We went through the 10 seed because I think at this point they're all locked up. I don't think any teams that are below have a chance of making it. And like I said, different from our previous power rankings, we're factoring in obviously what they've shown us, but a big factor into it is what we think they'll do in the playoffs. So some teams that have a lot of wins, they've done really well for the whole season. We don't really see them you know, making a splash in the playoffs, so they might not rank as highly as you'd like and vice versa with teams that are lower in the standings. So keep that in mind. All right, now there's gonna be some foolishness on here. One of y'all gonna trust <laughs> one of you guys are gonna trust somebody way too much. <laughs> I have a habit of positivity when sometimes I need to be more negative with these teams, so we'll see. Listen, and I, I have I, a, I and I have a habit of negativity. Sometimes I need to be more positive. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm a much you're a hater, apparently. We have, we have our titles. I guess I'm the com perfect combination of both. Let's fucking go. Right. I think I'm up That's first. We, we got two. 20 through 16, number 20, surprise, surprise, the Atlanta Hawks. Trey Young recently came back, still the worst team out of the bunch. Who cares? 19, the Houston Rockets. <laughs> he's so down. Week. He's so down on his own team. He well, trusts him less than why a are team the Rockets on here? that's the Rockets not in the playoffs. Mix? You said what? Why are the Rockets on here? That's supposed to be it. Oh, the Rockets did get eliminated. You're right. <laughs> Who'd you leave off? I think I, who did I leave off? He left the Warriors off. No, I didn't leave the Warriors off. That's some team that I'm, I'm really high on. I think I, I believe I left the Bulls off probably. Okay, so that's supposed to be the Bulls. I just swapped out the Bulls in your head. Yeah. Hawks, 20, 19, <laughs> Bulls, 18, Magic, 17, Cavs, and 16, the New Orleans Pelicans. Interesting. Well, okay, first of all, you're doing the Magic dirty, but I get it. I know why. You will let you explain that. It sucks I mean, to see the Pelicans and Cavs so low because they are so injured and unreliable. A month ago, they've been much higher, but I understand. Yeah, um, I, I hate to put the magic, the Orlando Magic there too. No, very well, by the time this podcast comes up, they could be like the second seed in the Eastern Conference because it's just so down bad overall. But Terrible you know, like <laughs> young team, <laughs> young team, first year in this bitch, they'll get their time. I don't think their time is just now. <laughs> no, yeah, I understand the reasonings, right? We, we've never been that high on them. I think just because the conference is so historically garbage right now, I put them a little bit higher just to give them credit. But I'd be lying if I said I expect them to win more than one play. I don't even think they'll win one playoff series. If they do, I won't be that shocked. Damn sure I don't think they'll win two playoff series. So I can't really justify putting them too much higher. Yeah. I also wish I could put the New Orleans Pelicans higher as well. But they just have so many kinks in their entire starting lineup that yeah. just don't flow well. Like, I can't, you can't just go ahead and bench your starting center, you know what I'm saying, for random times throughout the uh entire course of a playoff series in favor of Larry Nance, you know what I'm saying? And expect that yeah. to produce <laughs> real wins deep into the playoffs. Even on top of that, happen. like I'm more so just like Ingram's not there and I don't even have, that really have well. a huge issue with their lineup. I think they've proven that they can win despite their flaws. But if Ingram's not there, as we see, they're significantly worse. They are basically a sub 500 team. I have it written down. Let me see. They, the record without Ingram is nine and seven. So they're just barely 500 without him. That's not good enough to make a splash. If it was fully healthy, they'd be really high because they were clicking at the perfect time. But, you know, with so much of a question mark, even if he comes back, what he'll look like, hard to rank them super high right now. Yeah. 
Ingram oh, adds boy. like a touch of predict unpredictability to their offense. Mm -hmm. And also he's, you know, very viable uh facilitator as well on that team too. For sure. Rebounder and also their shit. So it's just a Low key the best passer in the lineup. You can have Ooh. that. I wouldn't argue that at all. Which is no, not a high bar to clear being a better passer yeah, exactly. than Zion and CJ, but he's been good. <laughs> and his defense has been very, very improved this year. He's been legitimately good defensively, which I don't think has ever really been the case throughout his career. I agree. Okay. okay. Donovan, what's your what's your first five? Yeah, let's see that. All right. So I have the Hawks at 20, I have the Bulls at 19, Kings at 18. Pacers at 17 and the Golden State Warriors at 16. Interesting. So, wow. Okay, so, so Mo has the Golden State Warriors top 15, clearly. Interesting. Yeah. So my bottom four, so from 17 through 20, these are the teams um, where at least 18, 19, and 20, I don't expect these teams to make it out of the play-in. Um, the Pacers, they could potentially fall into the seven. I don't know if they are, but I still just don't have a lot of hope for them actually like winning a playoff series. Whereas like Miami, Philly, even if they are in the play-in, I can see them getting out of the play-in, winning a playoff series, that type of stuff. So that's where yeah. the bottom four comes from. And then the Warriors is kind of the same thing where we, every like not everything doesn't even look the same. Steph Curry is there and Draymond Green is there. Like the names are still the same. But if you are watching this team, I don't see how they can win a playoff series, it just, all of their wins seem like they are so hard to get and like everything sure. just ha everything has to be right. Like they had a really good game against the Lakers last night, but Anthony Davis isn't there and they made a million threes. And so that's best case scenario for them. But when they played the Lakers, right, potentially in the, um, in the play-in, Anthony Davis is probably going to be there. And we've seen this year that when AD's there, that game feels completely different. And the Lakers normally have a lot of control on that. So I don't know if they're even going to get out of the play-in. And I just think that they're going to struggle too much. Steph is going to have to do way, way too much to even get them to like a competent level. So I don't want to be tricked just by, just because the logo's yeah. the same. Interesting. <laughs> I, have them, I have them a little chunk higher than you. It's more so about the teams below them than them. Mm -hmm. I feel, yeah. I feel better about them than you do. Because... It's the same, same thing with the Lakers, who I have probably higher than you'd expect, because I think both teams have been pretty solid since the All-Star break. They just, you know, were in a deep hole. The conference is loaded. They can't make their way out of the hole. But I don't feel like they've been playing bad basketball by any means. I do think they have a low margin for error, like you said. Everything's difficult. Everything has to click at the right time. But I think in a playoff matchup against certain teams that the Warriors would not be an easy pushover whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, similar to the War Lakers, we don't know what they're making out of the play-in. They very much cannot. One of them is going to knock each other out. So I have the Warriors over some teams that are actually in the playoffs. So that's a little weird. But yeah. we, we, I think they've been playing better than some of these teams. I don't even think that's any of a bit weird. I'm higher on the Warriors than both of you guys. Uh, because the Warriors have had, like, since the All-Star break, they have a record of, like, 17-9. and nine. They've been one of the seven, six best teams in the entirety of the NBA. And them starting the guy that I was going to bat for, ironically, Trace Jackson uh, Davis. Putting them in the starting lineup, of course, putting Clay back in the starting lineup, taking out pods has changed not the trajectory of this team, like same old, same old, but it gives them an entirely different look because of the things that Trace has been, been able to produce as a starter, averaging like 13 points, nine rebounds and two blocks a game. Insanely valuable, shooting like 70% from the field as well. And then Clay Thompson, he's obviously he helps make this work as well because you can't play two non-shooters in the year 2024 alongside you know what i'm saying you can't you just can't do that anymore and clay helps bring all that versatility come to life and so i don't know i feel like having them at 16 is fucking nasty <laughs> yeah, they're gonna and lose they're the plane dangerous they're not gonna they, make it out they're, they're probably it's weird they're not gonna make it out of the plane i don't think i don't think they're gonna beat the lakers in the first game they they're last know. they're last year right like they had they had a very tough way into into the um or actually no well they, they were the 60 but like they're playing they're playing the kings they were down in that series, right? And if De'Aaron Fox doesn't break his finger, who knows how that series turns out? Like they've had their backs against the wall for what feels like a year and a half now, two, maybe even two years. And you see that the way that they got out of that hole, Seth Curry dropped 50 points in a game seven on the road. Like that's the level that he has to be at for them to overcome some of these teams. And so if you talk about them getting the eight seed, 
And now they're going to have to go play Minnesota, um, Denver, or or OKC. Or somehow, actually, no, like that's where they're going to be. They're going to be the eight seed. Yeah. And now you have to go on the road to to play those guys. They're getting stomped by Denver. Molly <laughs> right? <laughs> Den- Denver is running them off, off the floor. Minnesota is not scared of them. Ant has shown over and over this year. He does not care about they any of this, this dynasty, any of that. And OKC, OKC is just a better team, and they match up with them very, very well. They have shooting. They have a, a very versatile big. Like, I just don't – I feel like the path for them, especially coming in at the 10th seed, it's it's probably the hardest. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, they're not going to – they have no chance in the playoffs. So I think I – I know it's a lot of teams, and you're kind of moving things up and down, and you end up like – you move so many teams, somebody moves up naturally because of it. Yeah. I feel like I overlooked the fact that there's simply no chance in them winning a playoff series, I think. Mm-hmm. So I wow. probably should put them a little bit lower. I, get, I lean towards credit for how good they've been as of late for the Warriors, but – if I'm being realistic, they have literally no chance of making another first round. Say yeah. no chance is crazy to me. I wouldn't I wouldn't say they have no chance at all they simply none. because they have <laughs> they Steph don't. Curry and the new lineup that they've put out there and the lineup that Steve Kerr has committed to as of late genuinely works and gives them all the versatility in the world that they need. And having someone like John the Kaminga come off the bench, give them an extra scoring punch and also, you know, have improved defense as of late and just being able to punish teams when they're smaller or whatever genuinely helps bro i, I like what i see for the Warriors, sure. and i'm a little bit higher or at least a lot of bit higher compared to them you know prior to yeah. the all-star break but dude they have to beat the lakers in la to do that and they still have to go and beat the loser of probably pelicans kings maybe Suns that they're still in there that is a harsh stretch as is to get to the eighth seed and then they're gonna face either the timberwolves or the or the freaking nuggets yeah nuggets is different to get there is already insane i don't think they're gonna beat the lakers if they do can they go on the road to phoenix and beat the suns after that or beat uh, the Kings probably because they'll probably lose that game. Actually, I don't know. I don't even. Know, I don't even know if they'll make it out of the play-in. Exactly. It's it's tough. It's tough for them. So so yeah. So that's why that's that's why I'm I'm the lowest. And so hopefully okay. after this, as you guys, you see, guys see my the my bottom four are the same as your bottom four: mm-hmm. Hawks, Bulls, Kings, Pacers at seventeen through twenty or twenty through seventeen. I guess the way I said it. Mm-hmm. Pacers are. Just not good enough, I don't think, to make a splash in that conference. <laughs> Shout out to them. Tyrese Halliburton is playing better. Tyrese Halliburton is looking like he's recovering his shot a little bit. A lot is riding on his shoulders. He has to really be a high-level shot maker in a playoff setting, which is going to be tough if his rhythm isn't going to be quite there like it was early in the season. We'll see how he looks, how that hamstring looks. He's going to have to be balls to the wall, shooting the lights out again. Mm-hmm. Don't know if he can do that for a full con- full you know, series against a yeah. top-level defense. They don't have Buddy Hill anymore. They've been struggling to find that shooting. The offense is still good, but you know, they're trying to figure out how to make that work. Defensively, still not that great. You know, I just don't see them making a splash. The Kings are missing Malik Monk, who's like low-key the third-best player, and Kevin Herter. Sheesh. They stink right now without that guard depth. There's, I think there's no chance they win a play first-round series either, so that's why they're low. And the Cavs. I had the Cavs at 16. Mo has them at 17, so you're even lower on them than I am. But Yeah. Th- there is bit. no reason for optimism right now, bro. They are a disaster. Donovan Mitchell got hurt, and they he's came back looking clearly not healthy. They have been an unmitigated disaster over the last 15 games. I am so worried about this team because I think they're going to get first rounded again. Ooh, that's that's tough. They're they're going to have some major decisions to make in the offseason. I you've everybody's kind of been talking right about like the Trey Young Wemby trade and like trying to pair them mm-hmm. together. And then once you start you know diving into that, you kind of hear some people saying like. Well, what if you can just try to go get Darius Garland maybe for like a, a cheaper price? Like maybe he's he's available if the Cavs want to stick with Donovan Mitchell. Like that we talked earlier about JB Bickerstaff probably being on the hot seat if they get first round. Yeah. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on with them where it just seems shaky. Evan Mobley, you still don't really know. Like like right now, how do you guys feel about Evan Mobley's ceiling compared to where it was coming into the year or even I, I don't know, last year. I mean, can't feel great, right? Like, obviously, you got to recalibrate a little bit. Yeah. Offensively, he's shown come. signs. He's yeah. gotten better a little bit more so than is the biggest haters will say. He, But the jump shot doesn't come around at all. And if the jump shot doesn't come around, then the finishing won't be that important because there won't be any reason to respect him from the perimeter, which will open up his finishing. The passing, you know, it, it all starts and stops shooting with a guy like him who mm-hmm. doesn't have, like, elite, elite athleticism finishing. He has to be respected as a jump shooter to make that work. But that doesn't happen. You're just going to... You know, he's going to be a elite defender and decent offensive player, but can never be a true two-way star. 
And exactly. he will never be able to reach his full potential as, as long as he's alongside Jared Allen. Like the spacing yeah. and the math is just not mathing. The space is not spacing, bro. Too many <laughs> bodies in the paint alongside alongside him. So it was just hard for him to elevate to that next level when he has another dude who does similar things on offense. Maybe a little, even a little bit better sometimes like Jared Allen. Yeah. And the hard part is that you could overcome that. You could overcome the lack of spacing there and the lack of leap from Evan Mobley as a creator. But the front court, I mean, the back court has also not been good. Donovan Mitchell, yes. like I said, has not been playing well since he, since All-Star break because of injuries and just a lot of missed games. In the nine games post-All-Star break, he's averaging 17 points per game, down from 28 before the break, on 53% true shooting. That is below league average. He was at 60 before. He went from being an All-NBA level player to outright not good while he's dealing with his injury. Darius Garland, down to 42% from the field since All-Star break. He has been awful. He has been just overthinking things, not making good decisions, not shooting well from the field. And neither one of them have been playing well. And if you're not going to have truly all NBA level Donovan Mitchell like we saw early in the season, this team has literally no chance. They might get swept. Yeah. And so I think that's kind of the only the only caveat of why I have them higher is, well, I guess not only caveat. There's two reasons why I have them higher. One is there's still the possibility that you get playoff Donovan Mitchell. And that like we've mm, seen true. him, we've seen him rise to a level that is like insane, right? That that duel that he had with Jamal Murray, like that's a that's a crazy, crazy ceiling. We've seen that from him um time and time again. And so that's kind of there in the back of my mind where I kind of want to give him credit for that. And I know that they're gonna be in the tournament. Like I know that they're gonna be in the playoffs. So that's a little bit like more assuring. But yeah. Some something's changing this offseason. Something is going to happen. There's a lot of things are changing. Exactly. There's absolutely no way that we're going to go into next season and that core four is still together alongside JB Bickerstaff. Like that's just not that's just not in the cards. Their projected yeah. starting lineup that they start all year: Allen, Garland, Mitchell, Mobley, Struess is plus three point three per hundred possessions for the season. That is so fucking mid. Like just be three points. Yeah, it's net, like, positive it's net not rating. Bad. No, it's not good. That that is in the bottom half of the league by far, closer to the bottom five than it is but in the middle. Like that is not a good <laughs> net rating for a starting lineup. <sighs> Tough. Ugh, that's gross, bro. Not Tough. gonna lie. I sit here and notice I'm like, damn, bro. Y'all really are that high on the Orlando Magic in the playoffs or going into the playoffs, higher than them. Yeah, than let's the talk Indiana about it. Pacers and Cavs. Let's let's talk yeah, about it. They're good. It. They're really good. I mean, like they are <laughs> legit good. I agree, they're good. But damn, bro. Nah, you're hating. Clouds are a different beast. Nah, 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 nah. nah. You hate it. You no, hate it. No, I I let's, 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 do, let's do the next five. I want to see where everybody yeah. has as the yeah. magic. You, Mo, you have good reasons. I'll let you talk about it more. I understand you. You're not getting enough credit for what they've shown relative to the rest of the conference. But I understand why it's clear they're not going to make a big splash. But, you know, it's a balance between projection and what they've shown. They deserve more credit than a lot of these motherfuckers. Yeah. And I'm going to give them that credit. And so that's why I have the Suns at 15. I have the Cavs at 14. I have the Heat at 13. I have the Magic at 12. And I have the New Orleans Pelicans at, at 11. Um, you give the Pelicans listen, a lot of credit for how poor wow. they look without Brandon Ingram. Listen, I under I understand that. Um, but I'll say this. For the Suns at, at 15, I also think that they're going to get first rounded. But I kind of think, like, especially with um, the way that, like, the season's going to end, like, they're probably going to be in the sixth spot. The Cavs... I gave him that 14 just because I that's just the Donovan Mitchell stuff, like, like I said mm-hmm. earlier. And I think that the Suns and the fact we've talked so much about it, and I'll just mm-hmm. say it again. But the fact that your team is built off of bucket getters and in the fourth quarter, you guys can't get buckets. That's a problem for me. And I just can't get over it. So that's why you're at 15. The Heat, uh, I, the, the Heat, like, guys, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's 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 not it's not going to happen. They are not going to go on the same run that they did last year. We've seen they have over and over and over again just tried to live off of that reputation and and that has kind of masked the second half of the season or where they haven't vaulted up the standings like you've hoped that they would when they finally turn it on and it's because they don't have it this year. They, mm-hmm. it's not it's not going to happen. Jimmy does not look the same. And granted, we say that every year, but you are asking a lot of him to go from a, another declined version of himself in the regular season all the way back up to, 
oh yeah, I'm scoring 36, 35 points a night in the playoffs and we're doing all that. That's not, it's just not happening. And I think that the Magic, the Magic's defense is legit. And I think that they are going to be able to, I think they're going to be able to bog down um, a lot of teams. And if they are in the three seed, let's say they play a team like the Knicks or they play a team like the Cavs, or the Pacers, or the Heat, I think they can legitimately win a playoff series against all of those teams because their defense is, is real. I think Paolo is going to be able to um, to hold up the scoring enough. And all of those other teams are faulty to a point where they're not at full strength, so it's it's kind of fine, you know? And you can kind of see that. Yeah. That sounds right. are too low. I get the flaw. That sounds are too low. Look, the Cavs, uh, the Cavs have, are in disarray. The Magic... I, as much as we respect them, don't have the high-level offense creators to be able to outshoot the best teams in the conference. As well, great as defense is, the offensive end isn't going to keep up. The Pelicans, don't have Brandon Ingram, have looked like shit since. You don't believe in the heat. I don't even got to talk you out of that. Yeah. The Suns are there because you saw them be down 16-51 to 51 yesterday, isn't it? No. <laughs> no. I've, I, haven't, I haven't been high on the Suns this entire year. I've, no, I, yeah, thought, I, know, I, I thought that their ceiling coming into the year was a second round exit. And I think that now it's probably a first round exit and it wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me. The, also their third guy, I don't, how do y'all feel about Bradley Beal? Cause I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of Bradley Beal oh, or like, or I'm not like scared of Bradley Beal in a playoff setting. That's no reason to be this year. <laughs> He's giving you zero reason to be. Exactly. They're, they just don't I mean, see, they, yeah. they also like quietly are also like, a mess and don't really know what's going on because they are kind of like the heat where everybody's like, oh yeah, the offense is going to be good and we'll just see like how they defend this and that. That hasn't necessarily clicked the way that you want it to and it hasn't been as high powered as you want it to. So no, I don't believe in them. And unlike the other, well, I guess outside of uh, New Orleans, but they're the 14, 13 and 12. Once again, those matchups, like the Knicks, if OG's hurt, they're a completely different team. The Cavs, they're in disarray. They're in disarray. The the Bucks might not have Giannis in the first round. Those teams kind of have a little wiggle room in the first round. The Suns are gonna have to go up against one of yeah. right, the elite, elite teams of the league in the first round. So that's also I why that. I, that's also why I have them lower. Yeah, I can see that. If you're being realistic, they have a harder path, but I just think they clearly just... have a higher ceiling than some of these teams above them. But yeah, was, I, I didn't rank him in the top 10, so I get it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I didn't rank him in the top 10 either. I was pretty damn close to it. But I would say I can understand your qualms for the Phoenix Suns, and they haven't done enough at all to go ahead and shore any of us up to be one of the best at anything in the fucking game at all, bro. You know, like you have KD, yeah. Devin Booker, and Bradley Beal. And it feels like they got they collected this trio to do absolutely like nothing with it at all, bro. Like it just feels like, all right, we're here. Yeah. What's next? <laughs> That's the weirdest part is we thought they would be like one of the most high powered offenses and a bad defense and like have this incredibly strong strength, but you know, big weaknesses. They don't have any incredibly hard strengths, but they just are like well rounded. They're eleventh in offense, twelfth in defense, just like cool in both. And that's a weird thing to have happen when you have that type of shot making from your top three to only be 11th in offense. Not promising. But, you know, I talked about how the Cavs starting lineup only has a plus 3.3 net rating. They're just not that good. The Sun starters for all the weaknesses are plus 7.5 in 100 per 100 possessions. I think it's a higher floor than some of the Cavs who are downtrodden. And listen, we saw in two games last year against the Nuggets what happens when Bradley, when uh, Devin Booker and Kevin Durant both get cooking at the same time. It's unstoppable. Makes them win two games against the best team in the league. They have to do that four straight times. Or not four straight, but four out of seven times in the playoff series. I'm not betting on that, but that gives them a higher ceiling than some of these teams above them who you don't really see a path to them beating some of these better teams mm -hmm. while the Suns at least have some chance, even if it's not great, you know? Yeah. <sighs> okay. I, I can, I can, I understand that. And I do agree that their ceiling is, is higher. Not by I, much, but it's higher. <laughs> yeah, I just don't believe. I guess I just, I guess we just disagree on how low their floor actually is. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I, and I just think that they, for how disappointing they are, the 13 and 10 post break, better than some of the team, better than the Cavs, you know? Right I, now. I think it's just the Cavs that holds me back. Okay. They're, they're, first of all, they're in the play in right now. 
right? So I I thought I thought that they would be able to get up, up to six. I, they'll probably beat the Clippers tonight and may end up at yeah, six. Yeah, because nobody's whatever. playing for sure. Yeah, every, every, <laughs> everybody's resting for the Clippers. So if, if they're at six and it stays right here and they play the Thunder in the first round, would any of you be shocked if they lost in five games to, to the Thunder in the first round? I would be shocked if it was in five games. I, w- I wouldn't be shocked if they lost in six, though. <laughs> I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be shocked. The only thing that would shock me is if they they get swept. But I think that a five game series against any one of these of these teams is a hundred percent in in play. Mm. It just gotcha. they yeah they they just don't move me. I'm just not a fan of theirs going into the playoffs. I get it. Listen, I'm not the biggest fan in the world either. It's just like I said about the teams above them. But we can move on. Not a team I believe in horribly either way. So I understand you. All right. Who's Isaac, next? You next. I don't know. Nikhil, tell me. Okay. There we uh, go. Let me pull up my list. My screen's covering up a little bit, so I can't see. Okay, so at 15, I have the New Orleans Pelicans. All the reasons nice. we said. I wish they were higher. They're just not healthy without Ingram. They don't stand much of a chance, I think. Sad to say. 14, Orlando Magic. You know, same reason Donovan said. I think they deserve a little bit more respect than Mo gave them. I guess I'm in between you guys because, well, I think they deserve that respect for how great their season's been. Their defense is suffocating. Palo and Franz. Obviously, great wings that can do a lot of the creation for you. Jonathan Isaac and Suggs are some of the best defenders in the league. I don't think they, they have no chance of beating the Celtics. Very little chance, I think, to beating a team like a healthy Sixers. I don't even know if I pick them over the Bucks or the Knicks, you know. And so do you know why? Like you said, their defense is suffocating, but also their offense is suffocating as fuck, too. No <laughs> one has space to do shit. It's claustrophobic in that motherfucker, bro. You can't do shit offensively. <laughs> I think I think their spacing is overhated. I think they do a good job of finding spacing with good coaching. And like I think there's room to operate, but the shot making isn't there. And even if they're spaced, they're, you're going to have to make shots at a high level. And they just, everything is so tough because of the lack of playmaking and lack of creation. And like I said, shot making on that lineup that they're not going to outshoot some of the best teams in the league. You go toe-to-toe with Giannis and Dame and Chris Middleton and Brooke Lopez. As much as they struggle, I, it's hard for me to imagine them being able to out-execute them in a late-game situation. I agree. But looking back, if I were looking back, if I was to adjust my list, maybe I'd want to give them a little bit of credit because their defense is just that serious. And yeah. in the playoff setting, we've seen teams plenty in the past before lean on defense more than offense and get by with this with the series or whatever. And if any team wants to do it, the Orlando Magic, I guess, could be that team. Yeah. And again, I just because they've been so good while so much of the conference is shitting themselves that I want to show them a little bit of a yeah, just give them a little respect. Okay. okay. 13, I went the Golden State Warriors. I should have put them a little bit lower because I didn't, th- again, I was tinkering teams too much. I put some people below them that I don't think they're going to make it out of the playing tournament. So why am I ranking them so highly? But they've been no. good as of late for all the reasons Mo said. So I, there's another thing where I give them credit for how good they've been playing. But there's very little chance they can make any, anything of it. Okay. Uh, okay. I Miami, disagree Miami at 12. 12 Miami Heat, 11 Knicks. It hurts me so much to put the Knicks lower because yeah. I I loved the Knicks a couple months ago when they got OG and we're fucking cooking. Yeah. But we know Julius Randle's not going to be there. I I want to believe in Jalen Brunson as much as anybody. He's awesome. He's one of the best scorers in the NBA. I don't think people realize he is a top five scorer in points per game this year. Utterly ridiculous. Can truly carry them much more than a lot of other stars can with lack, lack of help around them. They've done a good job of not letting teams just throw doubles at Jalen and knock them out of the game. They do a really good job of using Dante DiVincenzo as a release valve, Isaiah Hardenstein. They have built themselves in a way that allows Jalen to thrive, even as the only star. But without Randall, like, there's, there's a ceiling for that, you know? As much as I want to hype them up and say they're going to be this great team that does all these things, if you don't have Randall and you have just one shot maker and you're up against teams like the Celtics, teams like the Bucks, who have multiple that can match up and slow things down and really, really put the pressure on Jalen, I don't know if the ceiling's there anymore. I 110% agree. Nico, can we pull up my next five? Because I had the New York Knicks at 15, actually, <laughs> oh my because God. their ceiling is just so much lower now. I'm a, I'm it's not that low. I'm the Kings though. at 14? Get the fuck out of my face. What do you mean? <laughs> the Kings all, suck. Okay. Let's relax. <laughs> all right, you got Let's it. Let's relax. You got You're it. not going to sit down you and disrespect it. the beam like that. All right, the beam sit down sucks. They're horrible without me, Malik Monk and Let me and read her. off the list to the to the audio to the audio. <laughs> My bad. Okay, right? okay, okay, there we go. Ahead. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Fifteen New York Knicks. Fourteen Sacramento Kings. Twelve of y'all stand up. Don't hide. Thirteen 
Indiana Pacers, 12, <laughs> Miami Heat, and 11, the Phoenix Suns. This guy. Sorry, this I, I let Donovan's Knicks fan overtake me for a second. I got mad for him. <laughs> <laughs> so, New York Knicks, man. How are you guys? Donovan, how are you feeling about this selection specifically? I mean, let's, let's yell at li- him. Listen, no, we don't. We don't have to. I'm trying to do a better job of controlling my emotions and like some class. When you, it's like, I mean, listen, like when That's you hilarious. see stuff that is foolish, you don't have to react to it. So I don't, I don't, I don't feel the need to get all riled up. Like it's, it's fine. You said you're taking this beneath so you, him. It's fine. So you have the Knicks top ten, is what you're telling me? Yes, I do. Um, it's disgusting. I, 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 I do, but I mean. And obviously, like that's because I I like them, and I I think that yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I think that like the Knicks, and especially if OG is there, I think they even without Randall, I think they still have a little bit of a ceiling against some of the other teams in the East, just because everybody has problems. Um, mm-hmm. And I've seen what like when OG is on the floor, the defense goes to a crazy level, and so like having that defensive ceiling. And and being able to have more of a free Jalen Brunson offensively with OG out there, I think that they do have a high ceiling in the Eastern Conference to still mm-hmm. to still kind of fight their way to a conference finals potentially. But I mean, to have them beneath the the Kings and the Pacers is kind of wild. But I mean, that's that's fine. Teach their own, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! It's, it's, I actually, forgot it's, OG's it's okay. playing. I completely forgot OG's playing. He recently came back like what two three games ago. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think I'm actually I'm actually gonna move the Knicks up a spot. I think I know who's at ten. I have the Suns at ten. I'm gonna swap them. The Knicks, I think, can still make a conference finals. I don't think the Suns can. Yeah. Which maybe that's just a testament to the weak conference. But I think I wanna swap that. Put the Knicks at ten, Suns at eleven. You don't gotta change it to kill, but let the viewers know I'm pushing the Knicks up one. Right, okay. Bet. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's fair. If I was to swap anything as well, maybe it would be the Orlando Magic and Sacramento Kings. My only thing about the Kings, though, was that, like, no matter who they face up, they're not going to be, like, an easy go at it. You know what I'm saying? No one's like, oh, thank God, it's Sacramento Kings. Genuinely speaking, they're not going to get Everybody will say that. No matter who they Everybody will say that. Everybody will say that. If I'm any team in the conference and I can have a first-round matchup, I want the motherfucking Kings. Kings. They don't have Hurt or Monk. They're so, they have no depth now. And you're telling me I get to play Sabonis in the playoffs? Here? Yes, bring them. I listen. You say that like Sabonis is Trey Lyles or some shit. What the I fuck? Would, if I got Gobert, he might as well be. <laughs> listen, I would be. I would be so happy to play the Kings. They can have home court advantage. I would <laughs> give them home court advantage, and I would wow. still beat them in five. It's okay. <laughs> you would beat them. In five. They are food they just, <laughs> in the in the playoffs. They were they were already iffy as is. They're they walking league. Got surpassed, but the fact that they're not healthy completely. It's just they're fighting an uphill battle against teams that are simply more talented. Yeah, it's it's similar to like the Warriors thing where even if you're high on them in their play style, which I know you're higher than me. Obviously, I'm Sabonis hater. I get it. I, I appreciate you being higher than me on them. I understand it. But you think about the matchups they're going to have in front of them that are going to be healthier teams, more talented teams. It's hard to For imagine sure. them really make any type of run. For sure, no one's or at least I'm not expecting them to go ahead and be winning a first round series. That not that's not what this range is for me at all. True, true. Good point. Good point. This is just quite literally. <laughs> yeah, this is just literally. Yo, could you take them to a fucking six bare minimum? And the Sacramento Kings are a six <laughs> series out of type team. That's all it is. <laughs> You're right. It, it is still just fourteen, so I get it. But yeah, I'm just I view them as such a walking lick right now. Exactly. Wow, bro. You disrespect the Kings so much. And once they get yeah. outed in six games, I want to be like, ha! Episode 84. I feel comfortable tripling down on Kings 8 because I think they're going to get clapped either way. So I feel like this is a safe hill to die on. I mean, if I look so stupid, it, I look stupid. So they're going to get clapped. I agree with you. But it's which way, which position are they going to get clapped at? That's where <laughs> we're having this conversation, you know, and I just don't think they're going to get clapped in the worst way. You do. I don't. I have respect. I, have I don't class. think they're going to make it out of the plane. You don't. If they're in the plane, I don't think they're making it up. I don't. I don't either. I've 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 said it for for a minute. I if they played the Lakers, Evan, mean, everyone wants to point to like, oh, the Kings, they own the Lakers. They own that matchup. Be be for real. Like in a one game scenario, are you taking De'Aaron Fox and and Sabonis, or are you taking LeBron and AD? 
Like, come on. Like, we, we have to be real about that. It, even if they played the, the Warriors, Steph has had a lot of success against against Sacramento. I would take them over over them. Phoenix, even for as, as much as, as uh, you know, we just talked about their issues, I still think that in a one-game scenario, wow, I, would tr- I, trust, I trust Devin Booker more than I trust... Devin Booker alone, I trust him more than Fox <laughs> and Sabonis combined. Like, you just go up and down the list and... You start, you know, you start, you start thinking about the matchup and it's like, yeah, it's not, it's not really great. Like I'm going to have to go into, into war with Keon Ellis. Like he's cool. And Harrison Barnes. He's cool. This dude hasn't been watching Keon Ellis minutes. That's all that's telling me. He's cool. He's fine. But like. He's a good bench player. When he's your starting shooting guard and has to play big minutes because you don't have Monk and Herder. It's just, that's just asking a lot of somebody so young. Exactly. He's impactful. He's impactful. He is. He is. But he's overtaxed now. He is good though. Overtax to some extent, for sure. He's great as your seventh man. That's a very good luxury to have. As your starting shooting guard with nothing behind him, I'm a little worried. Can't do it. Can't do it. But yeah. I right, we, move, we can move on to the yeah. top ten. Yeah, interesting top ten. Listen, we're spending a lot of time debating teams that are all getting waxed. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like you said, we're just arguing two games right now. That's it. <laughs> and that's why that's why we're us. We'll argue about nothing. Yeah. <laughs> to break into the top ten. At number 10, it says the Suns. I'm switching them with the Nets, with the Knicks. The Knicks are number 10, Suns 11. Nine, I have the Los Angeles Lakers. Eight, 76ers. Seven, Bucks, and six, Clippers. Do y'all feel like I have the Lakers too high? Actually, no, none of y'all have uh, said yes. We all have them top 10. Yes. Yeah, yes. I mean, the Lakers Look are fine. Look at us. Look at us. The Lakers are Darvin fine. Ham. Sixes are it's, fine. I promise course. you, it's, it's not a vote of confidence in Darvin Ham. Yeah. He, is, <laughs> he is not the reason why I have them in the top 10. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I low key kind of want to put them a little bit higher. I felt like I had to just like fight my own bias here, so I went the 76ers Who listen, Joel Embiid's back. He looks pretty good. I prior to his injury, I felt like they have as good of a chance as any, as given the Celtics a tough run at it. Mm-hmm. So I put mm-hmm. them higher. The Bucks, you know, it's a conference thing. They're gonna they're second best team in the conference because its conference is garbage. I think they have a higher chance of making a run. I don't feel great about the Bucks right now, and the Lakers have mm-hmm. been. Legitimately good over the since the All-Star break. Yeah. They just are in the conference from hell, but they've been number two in offense for like 30 games. Since they've added Rui Hachimura into the lineup, they're legit, have a big offensive ceiling, and defensively has not been impressive. They've been bottom 10. But, you know, in the playoff series, and LeBron's going to ratchet it up, you have Anthony Davis, can use him in creative ways. I have a feeling their defense can be fine, and they have the offensive firepower to really outshoot some good teams. I don't necessarily feel strong about it because, like the Warriors, they might not make it out of the play-in tournament. They had to win two straight games in a single elimination scenario. Anything can happen. There's a world where they straight up lose the first time the Warriors advance. But if they make it into a seven-game series against the Timberwolves, against the Thunder, whoever it may be, anybody, anybody but the Nuggets, I think they have they a have chance a of winning chance. the first-round series. Yeah, I think that's very fair. I have the Lakers actually in the same exact spot. I think they have a chance against anyone not named the Denver Nuggets mm-hmm. uh, as I believe any any other any other NBA team does, but um yeah that's not that's not that's not a bad pick at all that's not a bad placement. I wouldn't have any qualms about that. It's interesting having the 76ers at number eight because of the unique situation that they're in. Yeah, for Joel sure. Beats coming back. Tyrese Maxey has seen like all types of fucking coverages now that he's been the lone star. And to some, in some weird way, I feel like that's been an advantage of his. Because now, you know, like he knows what that pressure feels like as the lone guy. And at times during specific moments in the playoffs, you will feel like that. And so having him at having him at eight is very interesting. Sometimes some weird feeling in me wants to put him higher than that. I don't even remember where I put him at my list. Hey, cook. Yeah, I did have him higher. I'll be mad. I'll be mad. (laughs) I had him higher on my list. And that's so interesting. And I, I think that speaks to how fucking low I had the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah. Tragic. Honestly, you could put the seven years higher. I don't have any problem with it. I just I felt like I was doing a lot as is projecting because like they said they've they've fallen so far down the standings or seven seed now, but you know Embiid's back. It looks like he's going to be Embiid for the play in tournament if they're still in there. They're thirty and eight with Embiid this season. That's incredible. <laughs> Fifteen and twenty seven without him. So they were straight up dumpster fire without him. But like you said, maybe Maxi got some good reps from that. Maybe Buddy Healed will look better with Joel Embiid the full time. The lineup of Batum, Embiid, Harris, Maxi, Melton, which I don't even know if Melton's going to be there and healthy but if he is plus 33.2 in 219 minutes played it's pretty good pretty one of the good. most dominant lineups in the league with over pretty 200 minutes played good. that's 
utterly ridiculous. That's the highest in the NBA of teams that played at least 200 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Special <laughs> stuff, man. Mo, what's, what's your next five? I want to see. You. Let's roll into it. Next five. Here we go. I got 10, the Los Angeles Clippers, nine, the Lakers, eight. I'm standing on it. <laughs> Trace Jackson Jr.'s Golden State Warriors, seven, the Bucks, and at six, I have the Philadelphia 76ers. I love the Sixers placement. Talk about it. Not mad at it. About, let's talk about it. Obviously, you're bugging with the Warriors, given their incredible, incredibly hard path to get there. It, I get it. They've been good. I don't think they've been this motherfucking good. <laughs> Come on. Man. Why don't why don't you think they, they've been this good, bro? They've genuinely been like they've turned the page of this was the starting lineup that they ran throughout the entirety of the season. If Steve Kerr did not just straight up chose to give this rookie DNPs for half of the league, you know what I'm saying? No, so just put Jonathan Kaminga into the shadow room, not even talking about this season, but for the past few seasons or whatever. This team would not be as down bad as they were. They wouldn't be a fucking 10th seed in this position. So much of the Lakers, I think they have a new newfound light. And Steph said in this in the uh, press conference last night, they have a fucking pulse now and they have started to find their new identity. Sucks that it's been so late, but it's fucking happening. It's here. Don't be a fool. Don't ignore it and acknowledge it. I did acknowledge it. I put them in the top 15 instead of, you know, the top 10. The the be team. a man. Do you think they're gonna beat the Lakers in the playing tournament? Both teams healthy yeah. with Anthony Davis there. Yeah, I'll put money on the I'll put money on the Warriors. We can make it. We can make a bet right now. Put it on the TV three board. We can put fifty dollars on this game. Do you want it right now? Shake on it. Air yes, shake virtually on it. shake on it. Fifty dollars. Lakers are gonna beat them at home in the Los Angeles. Great. I'm gonna virtually slap your ass too when the Lakers. Hanging <laughs> 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 <Dang it>, shit. <laughs> now, if they win, do you think they're gonna beat the Suns? You think they can win both in a row? Listen. I'm just talking about the goddamn Lakers. That's it. <laughs> but I, now, how would you have them at eight? They would, they would have a great chance against, against the Phoenix Suns, for sure. Okay, I actually, no, the Suns will probably win their first game, so they'd beat the Kings, which I think they will do, actually. But can they beat the Timberwolves? Can they beat the Nuggets or the Thunder when they go eight against one? Fuck no. I would be so surprised if the, if the Warriors have a chance of beating the one seed. Unbelievably Timberwol- surprised. Yeah, the Timberwolves literally, quite literally, have the Warriors' number. They've never beat them this entirety of the season, so it's hard for me to go ahead and say yes, confident. I look like a fucking bozo, so I don't know about that. I the Nuggets, obviously that. not. I think the Thunder will beat the living shit out of the Golden State Warriors in a playoff series. <laughs> They're a better I matchup think, for the Thunder. I think they would <laughs> blitz them. I think it would be bad. Which nah. maybe it's listen. I'm clearly I've been a it Thunder fan be all year. Bad. Maybe I'm a little bit too high on them. Maybe it'll be a hard fought six game series. I they match so up the surprised. best against them. They match up quite literally the best against them compared to the Denver Nuggets or the um, Minnesota Timberwolves because of yeah, the spacing issues and shit like sure. that. For sure. But that's just, because the other, that's just because they have no fucking chance with the other two teams and they have a little bit of chance against the Thunder. So, like, yeah, it's the best of it, but it's still not a good scenario. And, like, Sorry. listen, I, you could pick, you agreed you can find a world where you see the Lakers being one of those teams if it's not the Nuggets and they're having a run. Do you really see a world where the Warriors can do the same thing? One of those teams, yes. And if one of those teams were the Oklahoma City Thunder, then yes, of course. Why would right. you pick? I'm so would you pick the right. Warriors? Would you pick the Warriors if it started today? Them against the Thunder? It's not about me picking the Warriors. So if I pick he the Warriors, I'm stand on anything. Top five, bro. <laughs> I, I put the eight. Warriors at eight. You want me to put them at fucking five? I'm not doing that shit, bro. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got it. <laughs> you got it. No, I appreciate you being high on them. I get it. They've been good. I yeah. understand, but. Too rich for my blood. Also, the Clippers I'm here for have you. been bad as of late, but not that bad. My only thing is that similar to how I felt about the Knicks and OG Anunobi, of course, I would have put them higher if I was aware that this dude was playing actually well over the last two, three games. Kawhi Leonard, if he's going to be back, then this is a completely different conversation. Kawhi Leonard and having conversations about his knees is so fragile and I just yeah. it, it worries me, scares me, and it changes everything about this team. So if I assume he would be healthy be there. Then, yeah. but I get it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's let's get my five. So I have the Clippers wow. at ten. I have the Bucks at nine. Have the Sixers at eight. Let's go. Knicks at Knicks at seven. The Lakers at, at six. Uh where do we want to start? Where do we want to start? Wow. Okay, so you two both agree the Clippers are number 10. I that's way too low for me. I think give their flaws are there, but we know Kawhi turns it on in the playoff setting. I still think they have a higher ceiling than a lot of these teams. 
Why are you also down on them? Because their floor is bad James Harden, bad Paul George, and they haven't <laughs> been good um, for a long time. Um, yeah. And so yeah. I feel like limping in, into the playoffs is not a great sign. And yeah. they are scheduled to face somebody that it looks like we all have in the top five. <laughs> yep. Listen, that white man is on his way. And he has vengeance in his heart because he's lost to them two times in the playoffs. He's coming for blood. And he's ready. So I think that yeah. they they are in very, very dangerous territory of getting first rounded. So that's why I have them at 10. And their path right now is already hard. They would have to go through Luka and Kyrie. And then on top of that, potentially go through Jokic um, as, the, as the one seed. R- really, whoever they play in the, you know, whoever gets the one seed, it's going to be hard. But I think that the Nuggets are going to end up uh, getting it. So that's why I have them at, at 10. Uh so yeah, you're right. Yeah. Again, I have overlooked a lock first round matchup. I forgot it's a near certainty they're going to play the Mavs, and I had the Mavs extremely high. So I think I, I think I should probably move down the Clippers a little bit. Yeah, I don't. I, I agree. Okay, I I'm, not, like I'm not. I'm not feeling too good. I'm not feeling too good about them right now. Yeah, I'm not feeling great either. But I forgot it's they're going to play the Mavs, and I don't. Spoiler alert to our predictions episode coming soon. I'm not picking the Clippers in that series. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And then, you haven't. Y'all seen... got it. Y'all got it. You win. <laughs> nice, nice. I have the Bucks at nine. Um, nice. Giannis, listen, Giannis just got hurt. They're saying he has a left calf strain. Um, I don't know when he's going to be back. And then whenever he does come back, I don't know how much of, I don't know, like how healthy he's going to be. We saw last year, he missed a couple games in that first round series. And even whenever he came back, they still weren't able to to get the job done in, in round one. So I think that they're at, again, serious, serious danger of losing in the first round, especially if he's not there. And on top of that, they, you, I've, I just can't get on, on their bandwagon. I can't be a part of their program. Doc Rivers doesn't, doesn't, (laughs) Doc Rivers doesn't move me. I don't think that they have shown all year. They have not put together a legitimate stretch where the wins and the performance on court has matched up. So I just can't trust them. Embiid at eight, probably I, I could see a scenario where they're at seven for me above the Knicks. I just want to see him be play a whole playoff series coming back from this. Like it's been a, you know, he's ramping back up. Hopefully he's fine, but I just need to see it. I, I just need to see the health and that's it. And then the Lakers at six for everything that you guys said. It's, part of the reason why they made that run last year was because Rui was shooting the lights out, right? Was yeah. because everybody around them was just going crazy from, from, from three. You had these crazy Lonnie Walker games, all that. That's a part of their identity now. And if you have that three-point shooting, that is the formula. You have LeBron James, shooters, and a fantastic room-protecting big in Anthony Davis who can also give you 27. They deserve to be higher. And you'll see the only people that they're lower than are the elite elite of the conference. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's that's my list. I'm with you. I just couldn't put them that high when there's such a real chance they lose in the play-in, you know? Like that's they fair. just have that's fair. It's a path thing where like I'm trying to balance what they've shown us plus what I think they can do realistically. Hard to win two straight games. LeBron's gonna have to try as hard as he can, burn himself out a little bit, and then play the one seed, which you know it very well could be the Nuggets. There's a good chance they'll have to play the Nuggets in the first round because they mm-hmm. are probably gonna be the eight seed. And that's and that's that's fine. And I and I do that's get sick. that. Um I look at I look at one game scenarios. And I always look at who's going to be on the other side of that. Yeah. And if you have LeBron, I'm just never going to be scared in a one game scenario because I'm always going to feel like when we get to to the last five minutes of the game, I'm going to have the best player on the floor. I'm going to have somebody, I'm going to have somebody who's going to make the right decisions. I'm going to have somebody who can control all the chess pieces. And I just don't trust that many people more than I trust LeBron in a clutch situation. So I the playing for I would be shocked if they went home in the playing. Okay, I, I hope you're right. I will be devastated at losing the play. <laughs> oh, that was one time. Yeah, you spewed Before we get to the top five, facts, Donovan. What's up? Before we get to the top five, I think it's time for producer corner. Let's go. So, as you guys know, we got Nikhil here. He's prepared something for us. We don't know what it is. Just your time to shine. Your producer corner. Tell us what the topic of conversation is today. Before we get to the top five. What's up, y'all? What's up? Hey. <laughs> Listen, this is, this is quickly becoming my, my favorite time of week. Because uh, <laughs> I get to have a mic in front of me, you know? 
Uh, um, but yeah, as y'all know, I, I've been kind of cutting down. We have Donovan's bachelor party coming up. Okay. So the cravings have been at an all-time high. Okay. I, after after our show ended last week, I don't even think I said bye. I immediately got Popeyes. <laughs> <laughs> Big back. Big yeah. behavior, man. Holy Bro, shit. Listen, it, it was tracked in the macros. I had sugar-free syrup on it with some hot sauce. It was delicious. All right. Nice. You put By syrup the way, on your chicken? Oh, yeah. It's a little, I mean, little, like little sweetness. Like syrup. Just little some sweetness. Sweet. I understand honey syrup is a little strange, but I get it. Keep going. By the way, quick quick little plug. Donovan's getting married. If you're if you're an attractive woman in your mid twenties, <laughs> what? <laughs> you should, you, where are you going? What, what the hell, hell man? What? I need a, I need a date for the wedding, bro. Come on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's not where I thought you were going, but keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag. Uh, all right. Anyways, that's your last chance, <laughs> guys. Don't like, bro, what? All right. So cra- cravings have been all time high. I've been craving every type of fried chicken there is like crazy. So oh, this is about to get racist. <laughs> <laughs> I d- I don't mean for that to happen, but yes, we are going to tier list different types of chick of of eating chicken. Okay. Okay. Let's go. So, okay. so that's the producer corner. All right. All right let's go. You came on here and said... You're cooking. Yeah. You're a real eater, man, for that one. I've never seen anyone in my entire life. Tearless, different types of chicken. It's crazy. You're dedicated. I'm, I'm not, not going to lie. Me- mentally, this kind of runs through my head all the this time. This only happened in the X Lounge. It's crazy. I'm mentally... I'm holding back so much. <laughs> Honestly, I was on the edge of doing this, but that's why I gave such a such a detailed segue. I, I was like, I need, okay. I need context to be captured here. Okay. You need to make sure it doesn't look crazy. Yeah. All right, let's well, start. Guys, are we ready to raise some fried chicken? You can. Say- <laughs> <laughs> you set yourself up. You're you never really in did. two million years beating yourself with those allegations, bro. Oh my god, right. this is hilarious. All right, let's start. Let's start. Let's start. <laughs> let's right, rank let's, some chicken. He's a y'all expert. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's lock in. Let's lock in. <laughs> 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 Isaac, your feet are swinging, bro. Relax. <laughs> All right, let's get the basics out of the way. We got the basic, just grilled chicken. Uh, uh like homemade, with... fired up grill. Sure. B. Yeah. Barbecue sauce on it or not? It doesn't nah, matter. Let's, let's do as is. As is. I mean, it's probably a C. Nah, I, okay, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm going by even, even with barbecue sauce. So what, what's the ceiling you're giving just grilled chicken? You you can get sauce. some really good grilled chicken. Um, I think like especially. Depending on like how like how, how you cook it, you get the right seasoning rub. It's like yeah. even like you can get a nice like barbecue seasoning rub. You can you can put that at B. I'm okay with wow. that. Yeah, this is yeah high floor. I was going S, but okay. Oh, wow. oh. Well, listen, there's a lot of good chickens here. I don't, yeah, don't want to yeah, yeah. shoot our load yeah, too we, fast. I know, but I'm also factoring like, like, health in here too, and that is. Oh no, I'm not. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that right now. Yeah, I, I, oh, yeah, my fitness is, pal. Let's talk some more for yeah, more for straight taste. Okay. Uh, all right. So you guys said B. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So factoring protein levels. Get out of my Shut face. Up. Uh, I think another easy butt. one. Just ro- listen. Rotisserie chicken. That's like a. It has a B ceiling, but it's like a C. It's a C. It's a C. C. Come this has got to be the worst. My, this got to be the worst item on here. Are we giving everything a C if or above? Walking whoa, into whoa, someone's whoa, room and you're whoa, asking whoa for rotisserie chicken. Listen, rotisserie chicken does what it needs to do. It's cool. It's a staple. <laughs> it's a staple. Don't don't disrespect rotisserie chicken. You listen, if you are at Sam, fine. listen, if it's you're at Sam's or Costco, fresh off the line? What? <laughs> Have you ever stood in line for rotisserie nah. chicken? Oh listen, my goodness. And you stood in <laughs> line? Of course, because you have to you wait for it. it hot. <laughs> like it's a I've actually I've never done that. Yeah. <laughs> listen. But listen, before you before you eat it, it's S tier because you're hungry from like grocery shopping, whatever. Exactly. After you eat it, it's probably like C. I'll tell you this. I've stood in line longer. For rotisserie chicken than I have for Jordan threes. Okay, so I'm I'm give, I'm giving it I'm giving it some some credit. I have to put it at C. I have to do it. Human being. I have to do it. Wow, bro! <laughs> you fucking eater. <laughs> Capital E A T E R. God damn, bro! You need that dead stock pack. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm, put, I'm putting, putting it at C. C I guess. I'm putting it at C. I can I can understand putting it at D just because it can get a little bit played out, but I will go C. C. 
<laughs> Waiting in line and not putting it at sea is fucking wild. You said that as if it fucking made your fucking Friday, bro. Like, you know exactly when the trucks come in, they slaughter the goddamn chicken, put that bitch in the oven. <laughs> like, sea is crazy. Okay. 11, you're like the people that are selling Popeye's chicken sandwiches. Ele- the yes. Yes. <laughs> 1130 every, every Friday. Like, that's whenever they, they come out. Oh, this is insane. Crazy. Come on. Listen, I, I love this. Come on. This is my favorite type of conversation to have. Okay, okay, man. What's next? All right. <laughs> Cane's chicken, just the chicken. No sauce? F. No. But everybody eats it with sauce. That so feels unfair. You don't okay, eat it with uh, sauce. Uh, you don't you... even like the sauce. No, I, I was thinking the same thing. He, he, he <laughs> catch up, right? I'm one fourth of the people here, so <laughs> it's, unfair to, it's unfair to Raising Cane's to put it in a scenario that would never happen. All right. Let, let's vote on it. Y'all want to include sauce or not? No. Sure. I, I, I say okay, no. No, sauce. no sauce. Okay, no sauce. Sure. I would put it at D. Because ah. we're, we're just talking about chicken. Okay. I've Here's only had it once, I so get I don't cane. have a strong I chicken. add sloppy mama seasoning every single time. <laughs> so, like, sloppy mama seasoning? What is that? Oh, see? How do you you're, not know that? I've had seasoning. it once. You're not a real seasoner. Ew, it's what okay. does it even look like? What color is it? It's a red bottle. It's a sloppy mama. Come on, man. I'm not going to lie, Mo. You're, you're a grown man. Like you, like, you don't know how to cook? No. Bro, I'm from Atlanta. We don't got fucking canes down there, bro. All we know is Popeyes, K- KFC, Zaxby's. Bojangles type shit. You know what I'm saying? Don't I have type canes? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I love canes. To me, it's a personal S tier, but I understand you want to put it lower. I'll go. I'm going D. Okay. I would D? I've I've also kind of been off of, of canes for, for a while. Since we, since we left college, I've been off of it. I love canes. I, I think it is at least A tier, but I, I, I know think, it's I think, polarizing. I think when I they're think. firing on all cylinders, like when those teenagers are back there, like they're actually carrying it. <laughs> <laughs> when the oil's fresh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. well, listen, I beef with fast food employees all the time, man. When they're back there and they care about their job, canes can be like an A, like an S. Wow, Put it in A. <laughs> <laughs> Most of had it. We're both. No, I had it. I had it once, but it was never like, oh my god, this carries me. I'm looking forward to this right, meal. So like B. Let's <laughs> sounds like a B. No, I'm right, I'll B. meet you in the middle B. B. I'll meet you in the middle B. Feels like B. I understand. All right, next one is a uh, like chicken cutlet. It's like chicken parm. That that type of chicken. But well, that shit ass. Ah, uh, see, no, 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 no. I'm about to get here real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> About to get real. <laughs> Listen, a good chicken cutlet, Yo, cousin. a good a good chicken cutlet, right? You get some nice sauce cousin. on it. Oh my god! It's all that you gonna get real sauce. You Don't make me get <laughs> bro, do, bro. Don chicken from college. Listen, man. Over some rice. Listen, come on. I'm now. walking in. <laughs> wow, bro. Is it really like that? <laughs> yes, I've had it a few yes. times. Yes, it's like a nice crispy, a nice crispy chicken cutlet, right? Some good, I think some good sauce. S-tier. You you can get kind of spicy with it. Get a get like a vodka sauce on it as well, brother. Mm. Listen, we can we can do some things. Talk to him, right? We can eat. I guess the last time that I had chicken cutlet, it was like my sandwich was literally massacred with tons of coleslaw. You got trauma. And coleslaw. that just ruined everything. Coleslaw. No, no, we're not. Yeah. We're not putting the coleslaw on this. Again, we're putting marinara sauce. We're putting a nice tomato sauce. We're putting the the vodka sauce on it, <laughs> right? You ever have fresh? You just had one for Have you ever had fresh you? fresh moots, right? On a on a chicken cutlet sandwich, <laughs> right? On a chicken palm sandwich. Fresh who? Fresh moots. <laughs> Come on, man. What is that? Exactly. You're not. You're not a real eater. Put it. Put it. In, <laughs> put it in a. Put it yeah, in. I'm a. not a real eater. Eight tier's fine. Hey, let's speed this <laughs> up. We right. spent a lot of time on chicken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My fault. All right. Let's do. Let's do wings. S. S tier. Oh, S tier. We're not talking Easy. about S tier. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Just regular fried chicken. Popeyes. S. A. S. A could be S. Okay. Fine. S for sure. Staple. All right. Uh. So what about a chicken sandwich? It can be. This is a Chick Fil A sandwich, but it can S. be anything. Let's do Chick Fil A specifically. S tier. S tier. S. Clear so S. All right. What about hot chicken? A. Mm. I'm kind of fucking sick of it. I'm in LA now. I've been here for about a year. Every fucking block in Los Angeles, at least on the west side where I live, nonstop hot chicken. I'm being assaulted by Dave's hot chicken in my eye line every <laughs> single day. Every time I step outside, I'm fucking tired of it. You got it. But it's still great. A tier. I've never had hot chicken, so I can't speak on it. What? Wow. No. It's good, man. No. Yeah. You've I've had never had. No. You've never had hot sauce on chicken? No. Like, like the. No, no, like 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 the like the like Nashville like, hot like, chicken, like Dave's hot chicken, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's it's just chicken tossed in hot sauce, like, you know. It's kind of self-explanatory. I've never. It's pretty I'm good. Not I, I, never I, pre- I prefer Dave's over like Kane's. Yeah, I agree. 100%. I can't get there, but I get it. Yeah, I've never had a tier. Hundred percent. I'll go a tier. Yeah, a tier is the Listen, perfect range for it. 
And that and that's our tier list. <laughs> Once again, Donovan, this is another perfect <laughs> tier list. How could it not wow. be? How could it not be? <laughs> listen, I've I have jokes, but I know you I know pe- people can't listen, they they can't they can't tiptoe the line, you know? It's gonna get real crazy. So good list <laughs> comments. Good list from us. <laughs> good list from us. Wow, bro. Listen, they'll be crazy. <laughs> if I see the comments, I'll laugh. I'll say <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, oh, back man. to the top five of our power let's rankings. Go. <laughs> let's go ahead and just, let's let's move on to the top five. Show show us everybody's list. Here we go. Okay, so <clears throat> the, obviously it seems like we all have the same teams here. Yes. Uh, let's go ahead and read them off. I'll go first. At number five, I had the Minnesota Timberwolves. At four, the Oklahoma City Thunder. Three, the Dallas Mavericks. Two, the Boston Celtics. And one, the Denver Nuggets. What Isaac just said, I have the same exact list, same exact order. <laughs> okay, <Yeah>. there we go. <laughs> Virtual adapt. <laughs> Me, I'm different. I had, <laughs> I had I had the Thunder. I mean, I had the Timberwolves at five, had the Mavericks at four, the Thunder at three, the Nuggets at two, and the Celtics at one. Interesting. Yes. Okay. Biggest difference, obviously, you have the Nuggets, Celtics at one, which, you know, I can't really argue with. They have been unequivocally the best regular season team in the league by far well, honestly one of the best statistical teams of all time they are on a ridiculous yeah. pace mm-hmm. gonna blitz through the finals so on that account of you saying you're almost guaranteeing they're making the finals i understand but i think the nuggets are gonna win the finals at the end of the day i think they're gonna beat them when they both make it to the finals i view both of them as a near lock to make it i went with the team i think is gonna win it and all that, and that's fine that's you that's, that's exactly what i did i said at the beginning of the year that i thought that boston was gonna win the title and so going in like at least going like off of the regular season, bro, they're 15, 16 games ahead of the second place team in, in so the Eastern good. Conference. They are. That shows how shitty the East is too. I bro. mean, but they're also, God. but they're also one of the few teams. I mean, they're the only team that's going to be over 60 wins. Like they are so, True. so good. And when we get to the playoffs, yeah. like obviously there's still some stuff about them, late game situations where I don't feel the best, but their top six they are able Ridiculous. to just blitz everybody. And the fact that you can have Drew Holiday or or, or um, Derek Wyatt or Al Horford or any one of them come off of the bench and you can move so many pieces around, even within just those six players, I think that when they are firing at their best, they are the team to beat in the NBA. And so that's why I have them at one. Yeah, I respect mm. that fully. They are, they, by all accounts, should win yeah. the NBA Finals. The only reason we're picking the Nuggets is because we've seen what Jokic can do, 100%. and we trust the guy who we think is one of the best players of all time. But, but all logic, the, take that away. All logic says the Celtics should win the finals. It will be a massive letdown if they don't. One hundred percent. So yeah. So that's that's why I'm going there. And then also, I I really wanted to give the Thunder credit for everything that they've done, and they have shown they haven't really shown a lot of weaknesses. Um, in terms in mm-hmm. terms of like their play style. Now, obviously, they do have a weakness, and we'll see if Josh Giddy um, is going to hold the, the team back. But he's played pretty well in the last c- couple of yeah. weeks, and it's it's gotten better from where we were like a month ago when it was like legitimately a problem. And also, I think that if he starts to play like that, I do think that Mark Dagnall is good enough of a coach to where in the playoffs. Isaiah Joe, you take that spot. Aaron Wiggins, you take that spot. And he will make that adjustment. So I'm putting my faith in Mark Dagnall. I'm putting my faith in Shea, who's I'm putting my faith in J Dub, who is probably gonna have a yeah. he's gonna he's gonna have a coming out party. Like I think a lot of people in like who watch the NBA like very closely, they've kind of tracked his ascension and they're like, no, like he's good. He's a star. You get to the you yeah. get to the playoffs and you're gonna see him being Shea's running mate and being able to to have 30 point games, have big moments, he's about to hit the mainstream for real. Yeah. D- Mo, I think I can speak for both of us. We both agree. I've been on high as a Thunder as anybody in the fucking world this year. People call me a Thunder Glazer, a Chet Glazer, J Dub Glazer, all this stuff. But that white man in Dallas is motherfucking dangerous. Spare. And over the last 15 games, they have the number one defense in the NBA. And it's been pretty easily. They have a 105.5 defensive rating over the last 15 games. Their starting lineup with PJ uh, PJ Washington and uh, Daniel Gafford both starting next to the other three usuals has been the most effective lineup in the NBA recently. Lucas playing one and two as the best player in the world with Nikola Jokic. Kyrie is playing fantastic. 
I, at this point, am penciling them into the Western Conference Finals. I think they are peaking at the right time. They have the best player in any matchup except against the Nuggets, and it's damn close still. I will be so baffled if they're not in the Conference Finals. Mm. Yeah. I can uh, I can agree with you. They just have everything written in, in terms of just like the checkbox checklist, which is like, you know, for the Dallas Mavericks for the longest time, they haven't been able to check off having a good defense longest time, meaning the last two years. Um, yeah. And they finally got over that hump, have a legit, obviously, second star. You can't name too many second options better than Carrie fucking Irving. And then alongside mm-hmm. of that, of course, like you have the Dante Exums of the world who's reliable. Derek Jones Jr. hasn't gone anywhere and has been one of the better role players in the entire NBA. Daniel Gafford is there. Derek Lively hasn't gone anywhere. P.J. Washington is there. Like, bro, they have, they are... I don't want to say loaded, but they have plenty and they finally have enough for you Nico- for Luka Doncic to be like, I can cook with this shit and I can turn up an entire playoff series and lead. Exactly. And as soon as the deadline happened, there. we all picked them as the winner of the deadline. We thought that these adjust- additions of the big men would make them so much better and fix their issues. Like I said earlier in the season, I said their biggest weakness is a lack of athleticism in the front court. Insert Daniel Gaffrey, insert PJ Washington. Picks fixes that. Immediately they look good. After that, they had a little skid when I was like, oh, God, did I overreact? Is it just P.J. Washington? Is it just Gafford? Am I, oh, God, did I did I expect too much of these guys? No, I did not. That was the overreaction to a few losing games. They have been as great for them as we could have hoped they have been. We were right at the deadline to expect this team to be good, and they've been even better than we could have ever imagined. Like Mo said, you have the best guard in the NBA, the best second option in the NBA, potentially up there. You know, maybe it's Anthony Davis, maybe it's whoever. One of the best second options and the literal best defense in the league. How can you pick against them in any series that's not against the best offensive big man we've seen in recent years? Listen, it's hard. they have a listen. The Thunder, while while not as dangerous, they too yeah. have a very very scary true, white true. man that that they can that they <laughs> that they can can deploy. And the fact that you can put Shea and Chet into actions down down the stretch, that you can have all this versatility between him, J Dub, and, and Chet, like that big three right there, or that. Uh, Okay, not not big three, but the, call it a big three. It is a big three. Uh, okay, cool. That that big call that, that that big three, they're able to do so much, and the fact that Chet is going to be able to hold down the paint and really really anchor this defense, and you're not going to have a situation where like he's not going to have to go up against a Jokic if if they play the Mavericks. They're not. He's not going to have to go up against an Embiid, somebody that can really really push his skinny frame to the test, and so I think that he's going to be able to stay doing what he's been doing and really, really, you know, be uh, an impact defender. And so if that happens, I I think I like OKC to do to do what they do. And Luca's going, obviously, I trust Luca to do whatever he does offensively. He's going to have to work defensively. He's he's yeah. going to, like, Shea's going to go at him. J-Dub's going to go at him. They are going to figure out if he is up to the test to play some defense. And if not, it could get scary in a couple of games. Yeah, I guess all the things I'm saying too also apply to the Thunder. Also a top defense. Also one of the best guards in the NBA. Also a second star in J-Dub. So hmm. I understand that's close. Yeah. Like I said, I love the Thunder too, but I just can't pick against Luka at this and point. And that's fair. That's fine. That's fair. But something I will pose is that we all have the Minnesota Timberwolves at five. Could you guys not edge them any higher into this elite top four group? Not without Cat. Uh, it seems like Cat's going to be back though. That's we'll true. see that's what, true. what that looks like. It doesn't really matter. I you can put them above the Thunder if you'd want. You can swap them. I view them as relatively close. Like the the Timberwolves are the five seed in this, not five seed, but the fifth team here. For reasons that aren't really about them, it's just the teams above them are so incredibly talented that I think mm. while they are last in this group, they belong in this group very much. You know, like I don't mean it as disrespect to say they're last in the group. The top group is just so insane. But I think the Timberwolves very much belong, and I'm not mad at you if you put them at four. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm with that. Why do you ask? Did you hesitate? No, I didn't hesitate at all. I'm just like, damn, bro. Timberwolves <laughs> have been doing so good. They've been surviving like a motherfucker without Carnes any towns. As we speak in the making of this podcast, they're going toe to toe with the Denver Nuggets, like they usually have over the course of the, over the course of the last 12, 13 months. And damn, they're at the five seed. This is the best that they can be. With this roster, I don't envision them getting any better unless, like, obviously, Cat healthy changes a lot or whatever. But still, you know, they've done all this and they still can't be one of the four best teams in the entire NBA in our eyes. I mean, that's just life when you have the two toughest white men alive, the most stacked team in recent NBA years, 
and then Shay and them who are just obviously fantastic too. Like it's again, no discount to them. It's just a really good group of teams up top. Yeah. I would put I I wanted to go ahead and put the Timberwolves over OKC, but then I saw Shay come back off of like the quad that's been bothering him over the past few over the past like week or so. And he dropped mm-hmm. 40 on uh deer and Fox's head. And I was like, oh, okay, never mind. That, that <laughs> means absolutely nothing. The injuries mean nothing to him. So I'm like, okay, he's still back. <laughs> so yeah. It's tough though. Again, I'm not mad at any options here. Dude, it's if okay, so we all expect a Nuggets versus Celtics finals. Mm-hmm. If that doesn't happen, why do you think that'll be? What team do you think will have replaced one of those teams? Oh, uh, if you had to pick one. It'll be the Dallas Mavericks. There's no way in hell it'll be anyone else other than them in my mind. I just can't see, can't envision a world. <sighs> can't envision a world. It's not because of Dallas. Yeah, think about that. Okay, so Donovan, you you put the Thunder above the Mavericks because you think they'd win that series. You think they're a little bit better, yeah. if, I'm, if I'm understanding that correctly. Yeah. Which one of those teams do you think has a better chance of being the Nuggets, though? I think the Mavericks have a better chance. Um, but... This is this is tough. Yeah, I think the I think the Mavs would have a better chance going up against the the Nuggets just because that that singular like force of Luca being able to match um, being able to match Jokic. I think that kind of levels out where like as the Thunder, it feels even though the Shea is like amazing and he scores all this, it feels more of like a collective team effort. And I think that mm-hmm. if you're going team for team, Denver kind of gets the edge there, whereas. All right, Jokic is going to do what he's going to do. Obviously, like Jamal Murray, we'll see how he elevates. But if if it's Jokic and Murray in that two-man game versus Luka and Kyrie and their you know, two superpowers doing all that, I think that matches up a little bit better. Yeah, so. it's tough, man. Like It feels like we're the I – keep, I keep telling you guys this off camera. Luka Doncic is the main character. And it <laughs> feels like we're at that point of his story arc where – we're due for an insane run and for some legendary building block of a career type shit where we see a guy like right. break through for lack of a better term and like solidify himself in history. It just, all the vibes are there that we're going to witness a Mavericks run and somehow they end up in the finals at the very least end up in the conference finals. And it's again, it's all vibes, all like it feels like it's happening. It's nothing like nothing empirical. It just feels right to pick them. Listen, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see all this talk. I Everybody's mean, been waiting. You have a squad. Are you going to go get the chip mm-hmm. or not? Let's let's see what happens. Yep. If I, if this Mavericks team was a team to the start of the season, meaning PJ Washington was there and Dante Exum has been hooping the entire season, all sort of stuff, and all the other new additions were there, I honestly would have put them in number two. <laughs> over the Boston Celtics simply because they just don't <laughs> have guys that fuck with Luka and Jokic, of course. But they don't. Yeah. And the continuity is no. still a thing. If the Dallas Mavericks looked this the whole year, we'd be talking about a very special season from them and Luka Doncic. Like, the winning rate they've had since All-Star break, it, we wouldn't be having an MVP debate if they were this good all year. Yeah. But they weren't, so tough shit. <laughs> well, <laughs> Luka, you still are my MVP. <laughs> I respect it. Again, I, I tweeted. We had obviously, like I said, go watch a live stream. We did the whole MVP debate, mid our final award show. I was pro Jokic, so I kind of like argued against Luca, and like really, I was just arguing against his fans that act like it'll be a travesty if Jokic wins. Like Jokic isn't also having a great season as an all-time great, but yeah. I'll be so happy if Luca wins. Like I don't care either way. Like it would be great to see either of these guys have that moment. Nah, just just you know go just go get a ring. Isaac. That's all that matters. At this point. <laughs> go go get a chip. Mo, do you got to watch on? Bro. Uh oh my god. We're <laughs> fucking late. It's TikTok time. What the fuck? Holy ah. shit. We've been waiting for this shit for ages. <laughs> this shit has been running on for too long. Fuck all this basketball talk. Let's get to the real shit. Let's go ahead and draft some shit. Let's put some shit in the tier list. Let's talk this about so fucking many logos. Words. Let's go ahead and do this shit, man. Yeah, that was so many curse words in the 30 seconds, man. <laughs> <laughs> so demonetize, demonetize, demonetize. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to TikTok time. <laughs> Today, we are starting with a draft once again. Took a couple weeks off, but we're back. And today we are drafting the best NBA lineups possible with five NBA players that cannot shoot. <sighs> okay. Bricks Let's on bricks on bricks. Yep. 
Nikhil wrote down the bricklayers draft. That's what it is. If we're going to try to find a way to make NBA lineups with no spacing and see who can make a team that can somehow win games. Let's go. All right. So this is the draft order team. is Mo Donovan, me. Well, I can tell there's going to be some questionable picks here. We'll have to argue about it in the moment. I went with players on my list that either don't shoot whatsoever, like a Ben Simmons, like a Shaq, whatever. Or if they shoot a little bit, because they like, you know, everybody shoots a little bit. They've never been good, never been effective, and are like clearly somebody you would label a non-shooter. For sure. Okay. Cool. It all depends, bro. The goal of this is to fucking have brick layers, bro. Let's yeah. see whose team can break the backboard as fast as possible. Dent the rim as fast as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see which one of you guys slipped in some good mid-range shooters. <laughs> it's going to happen. But all right, you know. Mo, who do we got first pick? First pick? At point guard, I have to go ahead and select Ben Simmons. I ain't hitting shit, bro. From the free throw <laughs> line, from the mid-range, especially from the three-point line. In terms of laying bricks, if you ask me to shoot, you're going to need a construction hat. <laughs> <laughs> ben Simmons is a wild first pick, but you can't go wrong with the lack of shooting there. I love it, bro. Listen, we're going, we're going all time. And even though these guys can't shoot, I still want to win games. So with my first pick, give me Shaquille O'Neal at my center. Oh, Okay. Yeah, listen. I love it. In the can't shoot Olympics, Shaq is going to win. If you're going to talk about missing the most shots possible, Shaq's up there. Exactly. No <laughs> no threes, no middies, no free throws. Nothing. Not a lick. Nothing. Damn. First pick. Can I have young Magic Johnson before he developed a shot? Excellent choice. Go ahead. There we go. Magic Johnson. Who's, Second who's pick. Give me his running mate. Give me Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Ah, uh, see. Hmm. Okay. Okay, listen, okay. he can hit sky hooks from like 18 feet out. So I'm going to take that as a jump shot. <laughs> We're counting sky hooks as a shot. <laughs> yeah. I'm taking that as a jump shot. You might have fooled <laughs> throwing away the ball one. downwards, it's not a shot. <laughs> listen, the wrist flicks. <laughs> so I don't know. The wrist flicks. There's, <laughs> Where, a, is it a big there's, there's a follow through. I don't know. To, I don't know if I go trust that. But I'll let you, get, I'll let you have it. <laughs> uh, let's see. At my, at my three... Give me, uh, actually, no. At my power forward, give me somebody who used to shoot but can't shoot anymore. Give me Anthony Davis. Mm. He still shoots middies, though. He's a he's a high midi shooter now. Not eh. one of the most efficient. Listen, nobody's not calling a Anthony Davis a non. Come on. Listen, when I think of non shooters, I'm thinking about non three point shooters. Uh, so mm. and yeah, so we'll we'll put AD at the four. All I know is that Darvin Ham said he will shoot six threes a game. Nah, <laughs> and everybody collectively looked around. and was like, "Nah, that's not gonna happen." <laughs> <laughs> this pick is cheating, uh, but I'll let you have it. Mo, who's next? Listen, if you don't want to get, give okay. me Giannis. <laughs> now you can have nah, it. Nah, fuck that. Give me Giannis. <laughs> <laughs> give me the real non-shooter. <laughs> swiper, no swiper. That's me. <laughs> Look, you can have AD, yeah, but nah. the comments know you're cheating. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Giannis, pick, is a, Giannis is a super easy pick. Super non-shooter. Yeah. Uh, next up, go ahead and give me Andre Drummond. I need a <laughs> great bricklayer, bro. Interesting yeah. shooting form. Not a lot of people talk about it enough. Great role player still. But Drummond's a center. God. Yeah, Drummond at the five. <laughs> Drummond at the five. <laughs> okay. okay. Still tough. All right. Yeah, listen, your team is... <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely no shooting on your team. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, no shooting whatsoever. <laughs> That's We're going to be banging elbows. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, literally. Okay. I need some perimeter defense. Give me Asar Thompson at my three. <laughs> wow. You're definitely not shooting two. <laughs> damn. <laughs> You're shooting fucking meteors, bro. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> You're assaulting the room. <laughs> yeah. Felony. <laughs> Conviction. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> All right, next up. You know what? None of us can shoot. I need some goddamn rebounding to catch those bricks. Give me Dennis Rodman at the four. Okay. That was okay. a great pick. Elite pick. I need all the rebounds I can get. Elite pick. That's a great pick. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> Elite pick. And a small forward. Give me Julius Irvin. Mm, okay. okay. You, you have a talented non-shooter. But then again, what was his free throw percentage, Isaac? Fuck if I know. I can was, tell you he came to the NBA was, and was not shooting threes. Yeah, that free throw that free throw percentage was not asked. That's one thing I can say. 
He has Anthony Davis. I want to hear it. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> not letting that slide. I can't let that slide. <laughs> you know what? We cannot go in a non-shooter's draft without bringing one of the goats of non-shooting. Give me Andre Roberson at my two. Fuck! <laughs> You stole my pick. This might dog. be the best non shooter of all time. This man has a legit <laughs> highlight tape of bricks. We've never seen that before. Damn. And not a bricks, air balls. <laughs> this is uh, shout out to Andre Roberson, man. Yeah. What a guy. Hall of Fame stuff. Oh my goodness, bro. You stole my fucking pick. That's Roberson a- and Asar is filthy <laughs> perimeter defense. <laughs> We're locking people up. Oh my God. Yeah, no, that is literally filthy. That is literally filthy. You know what? Okay. I'm going to put Giannis at my three and give me Ben Wallace at my four. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. This is big as hell. You want to play that game? Let's play that game. Uh-huh. I'll show you crazy. some non-shooters. The rules are quickly changing. We're fucking playing jail ball. We're punching each other. This is going to be crazy. Exactly. exactly. I changed my ego in this bitch right now. All right. And Okay. At my two... Go ahead and give me a SARS brother on men. Let's play it fair. Okay. Let's play it fair. Okay. okay. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So my one, I got Ben Simmons. And my two, I got a Men Thompson. Three, Giannis. Four, Ben Wallace. And my five, Andre Drummond. <laughs> Love it. It's the worst team I've ever seen. It's perfect. <laughs> it's the worst team for sure. <laughs> All right. And any metric. Let's see. Let's see. I don't know if this if this counts. We'll see how y'all feel about this. But I do need somebody to direct traffic. So give me Rajon Rondo as my point guard. Does that count? That's a great pick. Does it count? Sure. You can have whatever. Go ahead. <laughs> he shot 40% one year. I mean, so wait, wait, listen, when Rondo that. was at his best, he was not shooting. So I understand. He was not a real threat, bro. They gave him yeah, the Young Rondo Josh was not hoisting yeah. trees. Okay, we'll, we'll put yeah. that. We'll put young Rondo. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. You know, am I too? It would not be right for us to not have this guy on this team. Give me Tony motherfucking Allen. I was thinking about that. I was thinking about T.A. I wanted to Tony Allen, too. Give me Andre Roberson on horse steroids. Give me Andre Roberson with a crazy mentality. I need it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> insane. Listen. Tony Allen's a great pick. He shoot like he got crow- crowbars for arms, bro. I love it. <laughs> Andre Roberson versus Tony Allen one-on-one. Wow. <laughs> Listen, that one will go last 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> the, the ball would explode before somebody gets to 50. It would go flat from all the blocks. <laughs> Facts. <sighs> so my team, Young Magic Johnson, Tony Allen, Dr. J, Dennis Rodman, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. <laughs> my team, Young, no young Rondo, Andre Robeson, Asar Thompson, recent Anthony Davis, and Shaquille O'Neal. A recent AD. You're nasty for that. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> my team is Ben Simmons, Asar Thompson, Giannis. Did I say Asar? My bad. No, you have Asar. Yeah. I have a man, right? Yeah. There we go. Ben Simmons, Amen Thompson, Giannis, Ben Wallace, and Andre Drummond. That's crazy. Non shooters, brick layers. Let's do it. <laughs> Elite draft. I agree. Great. I love it. Next thing we're going to do is time for a tier list. If you guys saw, Victor Wimbanyama had a logo revealed by Nike on the day of the lunar eclipse. And it's the hardest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's an alien logo. Very cool. Obviously one of the better logos we had in the league today. So what we're going to do, we have 15 NBA logos of players who have a signature shoe with the the company. So many logos. And we're going to put their logos in a tier list. So many logos. Let's go. Let's go. It's going to be a long one. We'll go through it fast. First of all, so real simple. Let's put these NBA player logos into a tier list. First of all, okay. Jordan, obviously S tier, right? S tier. It's the most iconic logo of logo history. Let's put it in S. Yeah. Quite there. Transcend, transcend sports. I agree. Easy what about S. LeBron? Is his logo also an S tier? Not an S. I think it's probably an A. It's a really good it's a really good logo, but it just <sighs> it's not like on its own. It's as clunky, like, bro. Powerful as the as A's a little generous too. I think it might be a B. I said A, and yeah. then I wanted to be like, bro, it's really a B, but it's LeBron. <laughs> yeah, be what real, about like, LeBron deserves a B? <laughs> He's an A logo, plus everything. It's not a goat logo. We'll go B. We'll go B. Okay. Yeah, it's cool, but there's better on this list. Speaking of better, or maybe, maybe, 
What do we do with Victor Womanyama? Is he S tier? Is he A tier? I'm going to go A tier. I don't think it's as good yeah. as, the, as the Jordan ones just because I don't know how many people want to be rocking an alien on their, on their body like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but listen, this is really freaking hard. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead. In terms yeah. of who he is as a player, it matches up extremely well and it perfectly depicts Victor Wimbanyama. <laughs> but yeah, like wearability, wearing, I can't wear like a Victor Wimbanyama jacket with an alien on. It looks kind of corny. But on shoes, it, re- it represents him perfectly. I don't put it in there. You can't now. Give it some time. We're all going to be walking around with aliens, I promise. <laughs> I will not be <laughs> inducted. <laughs> I'm ducking. Don't count He's me. He's inducted. <laughs> Yeah, I said no. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm cool with A tier. What do we do with Shaq? The iconic Shaq shoes. The logo's hard. The logo's fire. I'm gonna I'm gonna go A. The shoes is it fire? Listen, the shoes, different story. But when you see that, even if you took away the name, you know exactly who that is. That's that's the diesel. Logo's lame that's as hell. diesel. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's so hard for me to separate it from the shoes, and I know what this logo belongs to. I'll, I'll go. I'm fine with A or B. Where do you want to go, Mo? Don't hate me personally. I would say C. What? Like it's not. It's not any lower than that. It's not a special logo. Now I understand. You're not a special logo. Like oh four oh six. If I had a logo, it would be harder than that for sure. But it would not. Like it's just. It's not special. You didn't rock shacks like for real. Literally you, you did it. You, you know, didn't rock shacks for real. That's why. That's why you're putting it at C. The logo has no place in culture. We can go see. Exactly. It's not. No place in timeless. culture. It wasn't special then. Not special now. You guys are underrating shacks. <laughs> All right. What do we do with Steph Curry's logo? This little scribble. We. This shit is. We, we can put that in F. I'm. Listen. I'm sorry. F. I'm sorry, Steph. <laughs> I have no idea what this is. <laughs> yeah. What what is I can try to justify it. I'm like, listen, the S goes into the C, it has the flow, it has the smoothness of Steph Curry's game. Mm, it yeah, looks like no, a different just, language, bro. That's what it is. <laughs> it looks like it something looks like, else to me. It looks like you're in therapy and they throw a bunch of ink on here, like, what do you see in this? <laughs> That's what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm trying to find yeah. some inner demons via Steph Curry. I see a trash logo. <laughs> and that sucks. <laughs> bro, yeah. This logo looks like it's at the front of like a fucking I don't know, some type of ballet. Dancing, dance area, bro. Like it just doesn't look like basketball or anything like that. Doesn't look like anything. I don't. It looks like literally nothing. Yeah. What do we do with Kevin Durant, the iconic KD? That's hard. I'm gonna give it a solid it's B. Pretty good. Solid B. What? B? Do you think it's an A? I think I'd agree with that. I think it's an it's A. It's just two letters, like. <laughs> yeah, it's two letters, but they're bubbly though. What do you but mean? They're, but they're bubbly. But they're bubbly. They're round yeah. up. No, they're uh, for that reason alone. For that, that reason alone is stupid. We, I all agree with Donovan and B tier. So that reason sucks. Oh, uh, you guys bubbly just don't know. Ridiculous. Tell me, you guys. You guys are t- screaming at me. You guys never owned a pair of KD anything. <laughs> no, I had KD seven. All right. Cap. B <laughs> tier it is. What do we do with Lonzo Ball ZO two? Listen, big ball of brand. Never lost. They don't oh. undefeated. Un- undefeated. Now, the shoes, once again, suck. They probably made his knees, you know, turn into dust. But this logo is hard. Put it in S tier. Okay, you need to relax. Big ball of brand is never <laughs> lost. S tier? Big ball of brand is never Blazing. lost. We don't disrespect LeVar Ball's legacy. Bro, they're not going to sign you if you say this. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're not sponsoring the show. They don't have any You're money left. You're just making yourself look bad. Guys, I'm trying exactly. to work on something here. Put it in S tier. <laughs> <laughs> Shake it ass for LeVar Ball. Get out of my face. <laughs> in 2024, get a grip. <laughs> That's a shame. <laughs> I don't understand his pull. Lo- listen, Le- 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 LeVar Ball knows people. <laughs> oh, you're in. Wait, I think I think it deserves to be in C, bro, to be honest. Stop. With you. Don't disrespect Zoe like that. Why are you doing this? It's not on the same tier as LeBron. It and is. It's logo at all. It's pretty cool. That logo. looks like a Pokemon logo, bro. What are we doing <laughs> and here? And Pokemon is one Pokemon of the most awesome. famous games in the world. <laughs> Name five Pokemon right now. I don't you play it, do but I know other people do. Exactly. <laughs> what are we talking about? Don't Charmander, use Pokemon. Blastoise. <laughs> <laughs> we got Pikachu. <laughs> we got bam, Squirtle. Bam. Um, Mewtwo. Eevee. <laughs> thank you. That's five. <laughs> so what's good? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You got it. B it is. Venusaur. I can go for days. Oh my god, he can't. You're a real Pokemon kid. Gross. All right, we're going with Derrick Rose. Listen, that's hard. That might be an S. That's hard. That's that hard. 
the D and the rose diffuse. <laughs> oh my God, that's ill as fuck, bro. It's a shame his brand died after 2013 because this is a good logo that should have went places. This shit is an S, wow. bro. I'm sorry. One of the hardest logos out. One of Adidas' best. Is it job. better than Wemby? I think it might be A. No, it's better than Wemby's for sure. It's Easy. better. It's, it's, cool yeah. All right, whatever. Carmelo Anthony. No. No. Don't do this to me. Because this, you know that this S logo that everybody sucks. Draws? I hate it. So I hate this logo so much. It looks like that S. It's like, what is this, it's bro? It's <laughs> such... It just literally this looks predator like... This ass logo. Bro, it literally looks like an alternate logo for Monster. It's so bad. <laughs> it's a Monster it Truck like logo. A, it's... I, yeah. <laughs> I was so upset seeing this for years. Facts. It's F. It's either D or F. It's a logo for Facts. white boys that listen to Eminem religiously. Listen Ungod, to rock guy on headphones. Listen. Where and them white boys. Monsters. Hobson fans <laughs> love this logo. And them white boys. And they be Hobson writing. fans is crazy. No. <laughs> so Tech Nine's wearing this on his chest every day. <laughs> you don't think Joyner Lucas yeah, has eight pairs of mellows in his closet right now? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> D tier. <laughs> yeah, this is D. Looks like a fucking motorbike gang tattoo or some shit. <laughs> All right, what about Dwayne Wade? It it has to be a C because like I like it. Wade I like Wade? it, but I don't know that there this might is, be an F. I don't know that this is Dwayne Wade's from his logo. And I feel like you should know. This looks like it looks like stance, the socks. It looks like nothing. It looks like nothing. It looks like my favorite boba place, bro, across the street. Like, it looks like nothing. <laughs> what am I looking at right now? It, it does look yeah. like a, a yeah. boba shop. Look like it serves some fire eateries. <laughs> what does that have to do with basketball? <laughs> Dude, that looks like a boba company. That looks like they sell teas of assorted varieties. That's hilarious. Exactly. Put that shit teas in Teas or F. candles, bro. Assorted Put it in F. Candles, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> candles, maybe more than boba. <laughs> this is a company that curates vibes. That's amazing. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's that? Anthropology ass <laughs> logo. That's hysterical. <laughs> All right, what about Allen Iverson? Okay, I'm trying to think. This is feelings are everywhere. Is, is it like an A? Is it B? I fuck. No. I think this is a cool logo. I like it. It's fine. It's cool. It's not bad, but it's definitely not A. So B. I think the shoes are great, but the logo itself is just fine. I lean C. I, I'd lean towards C too when it comes to this logo. It's just so. Man, same Fine. era as Shaq. It's just like, what yeah. else? Right. Inoffensive, you know? not bad. It's not horrible by any means, but not great. All right. Yeah, I agree. Chris Paul, the big CP. Listen, put him with his it banana boat hard. brother, Indy. What? That shit is dog water. That shit is terrible. I'm not, I'm not doing this. Dog shit. water? It's not great. It's not great. Just zero creativity of any sorts. Zero smoothness, classic look, something you can put on clothes, nothing of that sort. Do Doesn't you not look good on shoes? No do character, you not, nothing. You don't see the C, P, and then in between I see, in the middle I of that, the see. three? That doesn't. I see whoa. what they want to do. <laughs> but I also see a very, very suboptimal logo. Put this in D. You don't need to there do is, too much. You guys don't appreciate real art. If I showed this to 100 random NBA fans of random ages, Maybe 15 will know it's Chris Paul's logo. Maybe. You you know, that's not a fair assessment. <laughs> <laughs> Put that shit in F. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. F, F is a bit much. Can, can we go D? All right, D it is. Okay. There we go. In. See? You, you're hating. You're hating. The way of Wade logo is cooler than this, but I'll, I'll, I'll live it, let it live. <laughs> Paul George. This is a good logo. It's a cool logo. I don't want to hate. Um... But it's, I, I do D tier. What it's kind of a PlayStation logo? I was gonna say <laughs> Xbox logo, but we're right here. Exactly. <laughs> All I know is that this feels more like video games than basketball. So drop it down. I agree. Yeah, this feels like a this feels like a cryptocurrency company that came in to disrupt the industry and quickly crashed. Facts. This looks like it is a tech company that was money laundering. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Damn. So what D? Yep, I'm with it. Okay, bet. Okay, whatever. I'm not voting like a mug. <laughs> Nikola Jokic. Let's talk. This is just biting LeBron's logo. I kind of want to put this in A. This logo is hard. Nah, you can't put it. It's just a better version of LeBron's logo. Okay, cool. So, Le- so, so LeBron A. is in B. Better version gets A. Thank oh you. Oh, my God. That, that's just how it works. <laughs> hey, you just, you just, you just, listen, I was thinking B, but Mo, you just sold us on A. It's got to be A. You inadvertently not- made an argument for A. <laughs> <laughs> it's not creative that's the thing i've seen this what before do you mean? i know what you were doing 
You see the end, the J, you see the 15 all in one with the Joker hat. This is this is what logos are supposed to look like. Encapsulate everything. It's A. Okay. Right, I was thinking B, but I'm fine with A. Kobe Bryant. Put that in S tier. S. S. Yep. Lethal. I don't know what it is actually, but it's cool as fuck. Exactly. Exactly. Kind of looks like some kind of like Halo either. emblem. No it idea what like, it means, but it's a vibe. It's a pure vibe, bro. It looks like a could, could be the know. move. It feels like <laughs> it could be the move. <laughs> what is it though? Is it a snake or is it just simply a cool shape? I think it's a snake. A mamba, probably. If I look real hard. I can almost see it. I still don't, but I'll pretend I do. There you go. You see it. It doesn't matter you see if it. you see it or not. It's a S tier logo. It doesn't matter. It's provocative. Exactly. <laughs> Keeps the people going. Another perfect tier list. How do we keep doing this? There we go. <laughs> I think I think it's really hard. I feel like other people list. do tier lists and they mess up, but like we just don't. You know? <laughs> it's kind of hard. Right, next thing we got. Mo, I was told that you decided in your free time to rank the top 10 point guards in the NBA <laughs> and you want to share it with us. Ah, uh, yes. This is a very, very nasty discussion because the point guard position is the hardest position to rank because it's the deepest position to rank. So I'm going to go ahead and For sit down. For the sake down. of engagements, if you're wrong, I think we're obligated to cook you. Really? I, I agree. I think we have to fry you if you're wrong. I so I think we have to give you the reaction that you don't want. You know what? Let me know how you feel as I read each of them off, all right? All right. So you guys want me to start from 10 up yeah or yep. one down 10 up 10, ten up. up all right here we go these are my top 10 these are my top 10 point guards in the nba okay number 10 jamal murray number nine De'Aaron fox okay and number Ooh. eight damian lillard at number Damn, dame fell to eight you gotta slow down dame fell to yeah. eight yeah yeah was, i'll eight. see who you put above him but that feels crazy he's not but, lower you know, he hasn't been playing like dame <laughs> he's not lower <laughs> Okay, that's, that's I thought I had him crazy. pretty low. Okay, <laughs> okay. I, I, I don't know how I feel about Dan right now, given his team situation, but I, we'll keep going. The efficiency's not there, man. The efficiency's not there. Defense it's has not. always been trash. He is not Dame Lillard from the past. It also it's all, it true, also true. sucks that he hates playing with his other star player because when Giannis isn't there, he's like, oh my gosh, I can be me. I can score thirty <laughs> points every single night. And then when Giannis is there, he's like, bro. Who is this guy taking all the shots? Why? Why is he here? <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know how to fit. Seven, Trey Young, six. Okay, Tyrese Halliburton, five. Ooh, Tyrese at six. Ooh. Yeah, That's five. Who's at five? I think. Who's at five? Jalen Brunson. He's a truther, oh! and I'm okay. with it. You're Damn, here. I can't argue You're that. here. He has been a top fifteen player in the league this You're year. You're here. He's been incredible. I support it. You see the vision. There we go. After after Jalen Brunson, four. Ja Morant hasn't been healthy, but okay. can't forget what he looks like when he is healthy. You're doing good. Yeah, number you three. Can't you, you're doing good. You're doing good. Number three, SGA. Number two, Curry. And one Luca. Was that the perfect wow. list? No reaction? Uh Yo, let's Yeah, you know in. what? <laughs> I'm rocking with it. I think that's the right top three. I personally went Shea over Curry, but I respect it if you still want to give Curry the nod. I think it's, you know, it's the time is coming for Shea to elevate, but Luca's won by far. There you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm, good, I'm, good, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Jamal Murray at, at 10 feels right. And um, okay, I'm okay with it. Yeah, I think you gotta you might want to move Dame down a little bit, especially going into next season. Wow. But I'm, I'm okay with that. Are we sure Jamal Murray is better than Tyrese Maxey? Ooh. See, Jamal That's a Murray, he's in the same exact world as fucking Jimmy Butler. You only rank him based because of what he does in the playoffs. But regular season, snoring. So who were, you, who, who were your first cuts on this? Uh, My first cuts would be Tyrese Maggs. He was the very first one. Okay. Okay. Very first yeah, one. All right, for sure. I see that. All right, good list. Good list. I also LaMelo Ball, too, but he doesn't fucking play oh, nah, him, he, so he, he's not top 10. Him? He's not top 10. Track. Good list. You, you survived you survive slander today. Nothing's too crazy. I respect it. Good job. Woo! Crown Eaters, here we go. We on a fucking roll. <laughs> you live to rank another day. There we go. Next thing we're going to do, um, let's talk about Mount Rushmore's. It's a new series I want to start where we basically pick the four greatest of all time of a different category and make our NBA Mount Rushmore of a topic. And today, I want us to make the NBA Mount Rushmore for the greatest teams of all time. 
Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. So, you know, Discourse. We can talk about that whether it's just who's the best, just who's, you know, you can, if you, whatever you want to count into that, whether it be influence, how they stack against other competition, whatever it may be. Let's make the, yeah, let's make the Mount Rushmore of the greatest NBA teams of all time. First of all, who's on there? Who's the locks on the team? Okay, locks is 96 Bulls. And then immediately Facts. 2017 or 2018 Warriors. Se- 17 exactly. Warriors. Exactly. Those 17 are the two teams Warriors. that have to be there. Yeah. Yeah, the first year they had KD, the defense was clicking. KD was playing out of his mind, energy on both ends. Those two teams are undeniable. Yes, I would go those two. Do we go 0-1 Lakers after that? I would argue, I would argue Showtime Lakers with Magic, Kareem, mm. James Worthy, and Byron Scott. Mm. Can we only have one? Yes. I think we, should, we can have two Lakers. Really? Yes. Because there's a I lot think- of teams out there. If we have to pick one... Listen, a three peat is a three peat. That's pretty impressive. Not many teams have done that. I mean, but best duo of all time. Listen, I I, I, I think get we that. should have more than one. I get Lakers that. Te- being real, bro. Technically, that's the back to back one, and the Showtime team also went back to back. So, like, we can do that as well. Uh, I mean, I just want to know. I guess let's end. Let's end with that. Let's figure out who who the third team is. Right? Do we want to go with like the eighty six Celtics? Does that I was thinking I was thinking Bird Celtics have to be there. Yeah. Wow. So I, I think that's the third one. And so I guess now, now we're right back to where we were five seconds ago. This is hard. I mean what where, where, no. where are you thinking? Because I'm stuck. A, a three peat is tough, man. A three peat is tough to deny. I'm not gonna lie to you. Who do you think would win a series if those two teams faced each other? Ah, shit. Gun to my head. Maybe Showtime. I might, I might. I think I would go. Damn, Showtime. that's tough. That's tough. That's such a hard question. When I okay, think about the matchups, this will, this will decide it. If I say greatest Lakers team of all time, what pops in your head first? Showtime. I think about. I I think about the O uh, one team. Oh my god, that didn't help either. I, but, I mean, I, I mean, but, here, I but here's the thing, right? So like, we have Magic ranked above Kobe. We have Kareem ranked above Shaq, and that and the Showtime team has another Hall of Famer on it, on top of the. O-line. All right, all right, all right. Showtime, it is. Listen, you can't deny two top five players of all time on the team. Some people yeah. would say it's the same thing for the O one Lakers, but we can go Showtime. Okay, so I agree. so Let's last spot, eighty six Celtics or O one Lakers. I, we kind of have to go eighty six Celtics. I feel like it would be wrong. LeBron okay. doesn't have a team on here. What the hell, man? Nah, man. Listen, I wish he was drafting next to other Hall of Famers, too. I wish he had a Scottie Pippen, too. Wasn't so lucky. <laughs> you, you act like he wasn't paired with two Hall of Famers in Miami. <laughs> oh, you want to put Miami on there? No. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, don't act like he didn't have the opportunity. No, no, no. But, no, but it's different when you're drafted to them because you have a much better chance of team building with depth around them when you can naturally build that way. If you go through free agency, you're not going to have depth there, you know? Yeah. Nah, that's a real nerdy. And also, they went when D Wade's <laughs> knees fell apart two years later, so that's a little different. They had op- they had opportunities. They had opportunities time. to three p even with his knees being bad. I don't want to hear it. They did. Again, well, we're not talking about could they three p. We're talking about could they be single season greatest team of all time. And it's hard to do when you're building through the free agency like that. <laughs> nah, Le- LeBron was out here. All right, so are we are we cool with this? Are we cool with the top four NBA teams of all time on Mount Rushmore being the 2017 Warriors, 96 Bulls, and then Showtime Lakers and Bird Celtics? Let's I'm, lock a, it I'm okay in. with I'm it. I'm fine with it. Let's lock it in. Who I feel are, confident. No, no, no Bill Russell Celtics in there? No. Sorry. Can't do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Mad, uh, Can't Mad do respect, it. Bill. Yeah. All right, there we go. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to run back a Jersey TikTok. It's something we did in the past. We started a series of giving every single NBA team's greatest jersey of all time. We went through, I think, Ooh. about 10 teams last time. I got eight more for you today. So real simple. You guys know how it works. I'm going to tell you an NBA franchise's name. You tell me the best jersey they've ever had in franchise history. Talk to me. Let's do it. First off, we're going to start with the Oklahoma City Thunder. See, okay, Mm. so this is hard because I feel like their jerseys are very polarizing and not a lot of people like their jerseys. My favorite, they had a baby blue one uh, with Paul George and, and Russell Westbrook. I really, really like that one. I think I think that that might be one of the best jerseys. But also, this navy blue 
with the little off center OKC, that's a that's a top contender. Yeah. Dude, I ain't gonna lie. That baby boo one, that original baby boo one you were talking about was fucking ass. It was uh. disgusting. <laughs> it looked like a failed superhero. It looked like what's that? What's that superhero superhero movie? Beetle? That shit was trash. Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle? I really yeah, liked Blue it. Blue Beetle, trash. <laughs> I thought it was cool. That or that movie? <laughs> no, the jersey. Probably both. The jersey. <laughs> there was also one. Jersey's ass. They have a navy blue, like an all navy blue one with just and it just says thunder on the like on the side. That one, that oh, one's fire. That one's hard. That was a nine to five ass jersey. I fuck with that one too. Y'all are but sleeping think, on the fact that they had an all white jersey with silver lettering on yeah, it. Yeah, that one ago. sucked. What? <laughs> that was hard. That was awful. That was we're so poor. That was right such right that what was such hell? a boring jersey. It was not good. Man, fuck Thunder Jersey. Never mind. I hate this team. <laughs> <laughs> Next up. <laughs> The Brooklyn Nets. <laughs> this is a, eight of them look the exact same. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Over the last six years, the Nets might have the best jerseys in the league. Their throwbacks have been impeccable. That white one with the red and blue on the side and the stars to throw back to Dr. J, that was an incredible jersey. Hard. Seeing Kyrie and KD wear that, beautiful. Hard. Okay. Now we're talking. My top three right now that I want you guys to pick from. That white throwback one that Isaac was just talking about. Listen, the blue one with the um, the blue like gradient one hard. that they wore as, as the throwback, that one, and hard. the black, uh, the black uh, Biggie Smalls jersey that they had. Oh, I forgot about that one, the D'Lo City jersey. That one was crazy. That, that was that's nuts. one of the best jerseys that they've ever had. That's the, that's well, not the Nets might have the best jerseys of all. That's might be pound for pound the best jersey team. They are crazy. But at the same time, they I'm gonna go well, like, listen. Ooh. They did have that stupid Basquiat jersey. A couple years ago, that was stupid. People like those. The kids like them. It's, it's so I don't it. care what they like. That was disgusting. <laughs> they don't know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to go with the white one, though. The white one is too clean. It's timeless. It is. I can rock with that. Okay, cool. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, I see I see that Love I see it. that jersey, and I can just see Dr. J in an afro. It's fucking aura. Oozing. All right, next team. The Toronto Raptors. <laughs> now, listen. I know the answer is the purple one with the dinosaur. What's the second best? And why is it the OVO jerseys? <laughs> and why is it the OVO jerseys? <laughs> <laughs> the black ones are so tough. Just say that Drake's your favorite artist. <sighs> Just say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing a Kendrick Lamar necklace right now. You know he's not my favorite artist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. We choose it now. Okay. <laughs> I got the eye around my neck every day. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not, not gonna not the OVO, OVO jersey is pretty nice. <laughs> they, they are. Yeah, they're they're, they're tough as fuck. Bitch. I can't lie. <laughs> they're, they're can't lie. They're clean as a bitch. I would be very happy to rebranded to be this be their full time color scheme. Nah, they they yeah. they need to go back to being purple. <laughs> that that too. Either crazy. one, pick one, That's pick true. one of the directions that were good, not the one you have we're now. We're going with the purple baby Raptors. Obviously. Let's do it. Lock it in. Next team, the Miami Heat. The all pink city jerseys, the hot pink city jerseys back in 2019, hard as fuck. Very great. underrated. I think the white but ones the might be white better than all white ones. ones. Really? Yeah, nah. The white, the white Miami Vice ones are really tough. I do, I mm. do like, I do like those. I like the the white Miami Vice ones. This little like '90s one with the drop shadow, that's very cool. And I'm a bit, I'm a hard. big fan. It is of cool. Those. You can't sleep that, on the that white yellow hot city ones, one. Was so weird. That is like the Indiana Pacers jersey. They just got bored and they just looked over the next door neighbor, bro. <laughs> what about the all black one LeBron wore? Ooh. Oh, the blacked out ones? That shit was menacing. Peak super villain jersey, bro. That fitted LeBron so well. I sound like I'm talking about LeBron instead of the jersey, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Get a sprinkle in some glaze. But yeah. <laughs> I, I'm cool with the I'm cool with either Miami Vice or the black one from LeBron era. I'll go, I'll go with the with the Miami Vice because I legitimately could see that being like a permanent rebrand for the Miami Heat. Yeah. I honestly, agree. pick whichever color you want as long as it's not the gradient one. Any of the solid <laughs> colors ones, that could be the greatest jersey of all time. I agree. Facts. Next team, the Milwaukee Bucks. Listen, a very underrated team when it comes to all-time jerseys. Um, yeah, very. Who? Where, where, are we, where are we going? Because this Ray Allen one is is very tough. I like this a lot. It's tough. That so there's the one with the big buck favorites. on it. The one that the buck that Mo was sexually attracted to that one time on the TikTok. Oh, that is true. 
<laughs> sexually attracted to. Stop spreading lies on my name. The, the, yeah. the, the boy with the big buck, lying. hard as fuck. Listen, they've had some good city jerseys as of late. Are we going with Cream City? Of course we are. You know who I am. <laughs> Cream City me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But I really, really like the blue one they had that had like the green and white, like little like yeah. tiles on the side. That was stuff. That was cool. It's not the best one in franchise history. Probably not. The, but it's the best there. one is the one with the buck on it. Yeah. I agree. Honestly, all the jerseys as of late have been pretty good. They don't miss. I mean, they 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 right. put out a Cream City jersey. <laughs> was that not hard? It wasn't. You're not a fan. It wasn't. You don't frequent Cream Town. All right, bro. What's the next team? You're not a creamer. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the next team? Next team. <laughs> the Dallas Mavericks. They need to rebrand back to this shit. I'm sorry, man. What they have right now this is shit so isn't even good. Mid. This looks like a fucking middle school team. What? This is not good. This is fire. This is way better than what they have right now. What they have that white one, that white one on the edge with the blue lettering and the, and the green. That's that's the best one. That one's great. Yeah, they are one of the weaker jersey teams of all time. But I, I'm cool with going with that white one. I'm fine. I'm fine with that white one. That genuinely is the best out of the other ones for sure. It's just tough because they got no modern options that are good. All their modern stuff is terrible. They have nothing. <laughs> they have their regular basic jerseys and a bunch of misses on their city jerseys. No design in Dallas. Who the hell's buying Dallas Mavericks jerseys, bro? Sorry for Dallas Mavericks fans. So bad. <laughs> all right, next team. The Orlando Magic. Another one of the strongest jersey teams of all time. That black the pinstripes. Stripes. That's where it's at. That that's yeah, where it's I got at. that jersey in my closet. That shit is tough, that, and I don't even care about the magic. That that black, any one <laughs> any one of those colors, the black, the blue, or the white with the pinstripes, any one of those is the best jersey in, in that team's history. I agree. Beautiful, and the '90s cuts, the big letters on it, the bold outlines. It was perfect. But I do enjoy that jersey that T Mac has on him as well. Very underrated. Yeah. All right. <laughs> It's real it's okay. ball. What do you mean? Nah, I mean, listen, you, fine. The stars you have a very like crayon eater view when it comes to jerseys. It's <laughs> it's okay. I'm not wrong. It is fire. <laughs> what do you mean? No, it's cool. It's cool. It's all right. The magic pops really well. I you guess. don't respect. <laughs> I think the blue is a little bit too dull. If the blue was a little bit more saturated and vivid, maybe I'd like it more. I think it's an ugly shade of blue. That's right. Get, get, get into your bag. Let them know. Let them know. <laughs> You do this design. <laughs> my passion. Come on. <laughs> All right, next team. The Boston Celtics. I listen, mean, listen, they've had like three jerseys limited. their entire like. I know, I know. Yeah. They've been the same forever, but they got some alternates. And the answer is that fucking Christmas. Let me say it without cussing. I, I, we cuss way too much in TikToks. Yeah. The answer is that Christmas jerseys that Isaiah Thomas was wearing with the cream uh, font on the sides. Beautiful. Listen, Isaiah ah. Thomas, they might have forgotten your legacy. Not me. Not us. We know what you did for that city. And you put... Yeah, I know you played in Christmas that one time with the cool jersey. I was there. Exactly. I watched it. That jersey's fire. I'm with you. Ah. Man. I mean, it's it's solid. It's all right. Isaac, your track record is looking real sus, man. You are a cream man to the core. And that's what it is. That's for sure. Off-white is. is a beautiful color in fashion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know you love that. <laughs> that was so weird. <laughs> wow. You made it weird. <laughs> no, anything where you should replace white with the tan of some sort or cream like that immediately makes it hard. Oh, really? Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> All right, bro. Oh, God. Next up. I think it's the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to the next freaking video. What do you want to do next? Okay, next thing we're gonna do. <laughs> I'm gonna give you guys two NBA teams, and you guys have to make the best starting lineup possible combining their two lineups. So basically, you're gonna go through like each position and pick who wins that position. You know, tell me more. Point guard versus point guard, shooting guard versus shooting guard, etc. Tell me more. It's current. It's it doesn't matter. It just means a mixture. But I'm gonna give you two teams. It'll it'll be specified for you. Cool. So, real simple. Let's make the best combined starting five out of these two teams. First up, we got the 2016 Golden State Warriors and the 2024 Boston Celtics. 
All right, 2016 so Warriors. Just replace Harrison Barnes. The center. Oh. Yeah. Oh, well. Whoa. I mean. Both okay, of them. Guys are, Fuck it. Both of them. Let's do nah, it. No, 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 no. Okay, so point guard. Okay, point it. guard, we're obviously going Steph Curry. Yes. Point guard, Rondo, for sure. Clay is starting as well. Jason you Tatum, not I'm sorry. Me. You just said Rondo? I said Rondo, my bad. Steph <laughs> is starting. <laughs> yes. Clay is but, starting as well. Are you sure Clay starting over this year's Jalen Brown? Yes. He's starting over Jalen yes. Brown. One of the greatest shooters of all time in his prime. I had, I had to ask. I agree. I agree. I had to ask. <laughs> yeah. Jason Tatum starting. three. Easy. Okay. Draymond has to play. He has oh, to. Oh, I forgot. Wait, no, 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 no. We, we mix this all up. Two is Derek White, so he's not starting over Clay. Three. What? Is Jalen Brown versus Harrison Barnes. We're going Jalen Brown? Uh, yeah, for sure. Okay. Ah, okay. Yeah. I guess. I see how you're playing this, yeah. That's, that's how it is. You go, you go position by position. Okay. Fine. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Power forward, Draymond Green or Jason Tatum? We're going. That's gross. we're going Draymond Green over Jason Tatum. Yes, you have. Listen, the 2016 if Warriors is Steph, the better then. team. We are we are revolving or we are putting people based on how they play, not based on how this Celtics team play. So Draymond has to be there. It's so hard because it's like, do you want the more talented player or the better fit with Steph Curry? I want the better fit with Steph Curry because he's the best player. Yeah, exactly. But it's so hard because Jason Tatum is galaxies better. Like it's. I'm sorry, fam. Jason. Not on defense. He's and a great what, defender. What, what Dray, but he's not better than Draymond, point blank, period. And then also what Draymond does for Steph offensively, it's invaluable. Nobody Tatum cannot do that. Jason Tatum cannot set moving screens the way that Draymond Green does. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's not he's not doing it. He is not pass protecting, pass protecting for Steph Curry the way that Draymond is. Put Dre in that lineup. He's definitely not dick kicking the way Draymond was in 2016. Either. Nobody has Steph's back like Draymond. <laughs> <laughs> you can't find that kind of connection everywhere. It's one to one. It's special. <laughs> Center, Chris Osborne is starting. Yeah. Give Andrew Bogut Andrew his Bogut. respect. Now nah, play. It's oh my <laughs> it's <Chris God>. Stop. <laughs> Dude, if you gave the freaking if you gave the 2016 Warriors Jalen Brown and Kristaps, they would never lose a game. Wow. It would be over. They would quite literally win like 78 games. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next team. This matchup we got. Uh oh, it's not loading. Okay. <laughs> the 2012 Thunder. Or the, uh, the 2024 Thunder. Oh, this is sad, Come man. on. Point guard. Do we go young Russ or do we go Shea? 25-year-old Shea has to go ahead and start. Or is he 26? Ooh. Shea has to start. What, has to? Yeah. This is, this is an MVP what? Russ. This is younger Russ. Come on, guys. Come on. This Shea's been top three MVP voting. Was Russ that year? No, he wasn't. And this was but Russ it's Russ. I don't know. Oh stuff. my God! You don't know how good Russell Westbrook was. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> what do we go with, Donovan? You decide. We'll, I'm torn. We'll go with Shea. Torn. Ooh, Shea. Okay. Shooting guard. Who started? James Harden was. Let's assume James Harden started. No, we no, James Harden over no. Here? We can't. We can't do that. James Harden was coming off the bench. Put Jalen Williams in yeah, there. Okay, that's what I'm saying. We have to be consistent. Well, Jalen no, Williams consistent. plays power forward. Oh, true. So shooting guard is, I guess Josh Giddy. I don't know who started. Who's two and three between? Tabo Cephalosa was. Oh wait, hold on. Yeah, who, wait, nah. who's the starting shooting guard again? For them, it's it's Giddy. For OKC right now, it's Giddy. But back then, wasn't I believe it was Tabo Cephalosa. He was no, he wasn't the two, was he? Tabo? Yeah, he was. Ta Tabo, Tabo was was the two. Tabo was Russ, Tabo, Katie, Ibaka, and Perk. Okay, you're right. You're Perk. right. It was Tabo. Okay. Cool. At the two, did we go Cephalosha or Josh Giddy? Listen. Cephalosha. Give give me I need some defense. I need some defense. Give me Tabo. Okay, we'll go with the size. Well, actually, Josh Giddy just as tall. All right. At the three, <laughs> Kevin Durant or Lou Dort. I don't know. Uh, I mean, listen, Lou's been hooping this year, right? His shooting. <laughs> I love the three-point shot progression. I know. I can promise you Lou Dort bench presses more than Kevin Durant. We need some strength on true. our team. He can do more pull-ups. <laughs> I can promise you. All right. Yeah. Let's, let's go ahead and pick up Kevin Durant. Stop yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> Serge Ibaka 
or Jalen Williams? They used to call him Sergi Blaka with the way he was sending <laughs> shit left and right back then. <laughs> <laughs> You said that with so much passion. <laughs> yeah, because I was passionate about my Congo King, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's gotta be my racist. Congo King. <laughs> oh, How? If, I say, if I said it, it would be racist. Mo can say it. <laughs> you know what? I have a feeling. I know who I want to go with at the five. So give, because here's the thing. You got to pick the four and the five together. I don't feel like, like we yeah. can split up. So if we take okay. Serge Ibaka, I assume we're picking Abe Lincoln over Kendrick Perkins. Yeah, Chet Holmgren at the five. Serge Ibaka and Chet together is pretty ridiculous. That's dangerous, bro. But this was Chet. I mean, this was Serge before he developed that three point shot. At that time, he didn't have he didn't have a three on him at all. Hey, let Chet space the floor. It'll be fine. All right, give, give me yeah. Serge Ibaka. I'm sorry, J Dub. I love you, but we gotta go Serge Ibaka. Oh uh, man, that's tough. This hurts. I think you guys folded on that one. This hurts. So be the it. The defense is crazy, <laughs> but still. Exactly. You ruined, ridiculous. You, you're on Shea's game, though. That's what it is. He needs spacing. He has Kevin Durant. And Chet Holmgren. So? So? He needs optimal spacing. He needs everyone he needs out the fucking way. optimal spacing. Well, listen. <laughs> <laughs> he has all-stars. Like, he's going to be okay. <laughs> he's going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> <Our next matchup. laughs> the 2011 Dallas Mavericks what? and the 2021 <laughs> okay. Bucks. Um, all right, so at point guard, point guard, Jason Kidd or Drew Holiday? Jason Kidd. Ooh, it's, it's old man Jason Kidd. Are you sure? I want Jason Kidd. Drew Holiday was so inconsistent back then. Wait, <sighs> I want defensively, he was not. I want Donovan we're, we're, real quick. Question. This matters a lot. Are we gonna have Giannis or Dirk? no? No, no. Is it play, play the go put my position. Don't, don't cheat. I know, but we have to like make no. You need to play the decisions. game. I want Jason Kidd. Okay, okay. fucking you. You're passionate about it. You can have Jason Kidd. Uh, thank you. Shooting guard, Jason Terry or Dante Divincenzo. <laughs> I'll take the Jets. Jason Terry. I'll take Jason so Terry. Yeah. You don't want Dante? This was before Dante, Dante? was a Nick. I'll take Jason. Listen, I'll take the Jet. Dante, Dante was hurt reason. hella for this year, bro. He wasn't playing like that. <laughs> okay. Small forward. Who's a small forward again? It was, uh, it was Deshaun Stevenson. Marion? Well, oh, it was Stevenson? Wait, I thought wait. Marion was on the team. Oh, yeah. What, it was Sean Marion. Shout out Sean Marion. Sean Marion or Chris Middleton? <laughs> Chris. Oh, wait. Hold on. Keep in mind, Chris Middleton was nasty Chris was in hooping. 2021. Chris, who, Chris is hooping. Chris is hooping. He did drop, he me, did drop 40 in the finals. Yeah. Give me Chris Middleton. Fair enough. Giannis or Dirk Nowitzki? The spacing is going to be nasty, bro, because we already picked Jason Kidd. <laughs> if we pick Giannis. I understand that. Dirk looked the big three in the eye and said, it's just big me. I'm, I'm <laughs> taking Dirk Nowitzki. <laughs> Giannis had wow. 50 points in a closeout game. Dirk came back think- from 20 and, and, beat, and beat LeBron. I'm, I think I might take Dirk. Giannis is a DPOY too, though. That's okay. We're going to have defense on the back LeBron end. Back we're going to we're gonna take Brooke Lopez. <laughs> we're either going to have Tyson Chandler or Brooke Lopez. It's going to be okay. Give me dirt. Give me some shooting. Where are you going, Mo? I'd rather have Giannis. Giannis it is. <laughs> bricks. Yeah. Actually, I don't know. Bricks. <laughs> I'd rather have Giannis, but having Jason Kidd there makes it tough. All right, we'll go Dirk. Fuck it. Let's go. Dirk's a better fit. At the five, Brooke Lopez or Tyson Chandler? Give me Tyson. I mean, give, give me Brooke Lopez. Yeah. Hey, we got space. That's what I'm saying. That's ridiculous. what I'm saying. Yeah, the spacing is Jason nasty. Terry, J- Jason Terry, Chris Middleton, Dirk, and Brooke Lopez? With Jason Kidd operating? I, guys, you got to let me. You got <laughs> to let me build these teams. <laughs> the team is I have nice. visions. Yeah, I premonitions. <laughs> 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 All right, next up. <laughs> the 2023 the, the 2023 Nuggets and the 2014 Spurs. Ooh. Point guard, Tony Parker or Jamal Murray. This is tough. This is this is tough. Cause Tony Parker was out Jamal, here. Jamal. He, he, he yeah, really but was Jamal out here. Murray's one of the greatest playoff risers of all time. He averages like 25, 26 a game, bro. I mean, but ton, for his Tony Parker is a finals MVP. He wasn't at this, point, at this moment, though. 
He was on the wash, more wash side of things. So I think I might lean Jamal Murray. He was out here hitting games was, last All-Star season. He was out here hitting game winners in the finals just the year before. No, Tony Parker, it was his last All-Star season, so he was still really good. But he was I don't not know Jamal Murray good. I'll take Jamal Murray. Uh, I feel sacrilegious, but okay, we can take Jamal I Murray. I know. I just want some shooting. Shooting guard. Exactly. Danny Green or KCP? Ooh. Same player. It's different. <laughs> Literally same player. This is different. But this is <laughs> this is prime Mohawk Danny Green. Like this is mm. this is when oh, uh, this is people. I don't know if you mean that in a good way or bad way, but I don't want a Mohawk on my team. Give me KCP. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 a fair reason. So I get it. Yeah. yeah. Michael Porter Jr. or Kawhi Leonard? <laughs> Kawhi. Kawhi. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. Kawhi at this age. Give me Kawhi at any age, bro. I'm taking him over MPJ any day. There we go. Kawhi Leonard, finals MVP. Power forward, Boris Diaw or Aaron Gordon? Boris Diaw or Aaron Gordon? Let's see. Two very different players. But very different. Essential pieces to their team in similar ways. Listen, I love Boris Diaw. I love a good passing big man. I think I got to go Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon can't shoot a lick, bro, and he don't have the finesse of Boris Diaw. No, he can shoot a lick. He can't shoot a whole lot, but he can at least shoot a lick. Mm. Nah, nah. You're giving him too much shoot a great defender. <laughs> he can't shoot a lick. Oh, y'all are hating. I've seen him make some corner threes. Mm-mm. Nah, nah. I, I think the only time I think listen, he can hit corner threes when you're controlling him on 2K. Not really in real life. <laughs> I should we go, Boris Dia? We everybody likes Come on. everybody likes the passing big man. He's well, we so got, we're gonna have too. another one down low. I don't know if we need Boris Dia to be doing so it. So why can't we just double up on the everybody passes? <laughs> That's how the Spurs win the championship. This is the beautiful game Spurs. Just pass, pass, pass. <sighs> but Boris right, Dia, Boris Dia, you're the power. No, 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 no. Boris Dia wasn't shooting like that. Also, he did shoot more, but I value Aaron Gordon's defense. Boris Dia was the LeBron star. Aaron Gordon, you continue on. Let's do it. Donovan eat shit <laughs> at shit. center. We got 2014 Tim Duncan versus 2023 Nikola Jokic. Where are we going? Ah, guys, damn. This is old man Duncan. He, we have to go Jokic. Old man Duncan was still fucking the best big man defender at that time. I understand, but he wasn't the MVP of the league. We we need to go with Nikola Jokic. Hey, you won't hear me arguing. If anybody was going to give Jokic problems, it's this man fucking right here, Tim Duncan. Listen, 2003 Tim Duncan? Listen, we have a legit conversation. Different story. <laughs> Different we, conversation we can talk. For sure. 11 years later, I don't know. Yep. Nicole I Jokic? It Jokic. is you. It's Jokic. Damn. I, I forgot, tried to figure out two more. Let's through these. Next one. The 2020 Lakers and the 2019 Raptors. 2020 Point Lakers. guards. Rondo or Kyle Lowry? Take your mans. Lowry. Take your mans. There you go. <laughs> Kyle Lowry. <laughs> Give me all that girth. Shooting guard. God. Do we go? Wait, did Norm Powell? Why am I? Uh, Fred Van Vliet started, right? Yeah. Yes. Fred Van Vliet or KCP? Give me KCP. What? what? Actually, 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 listen. Fred Van Vliet. He was a give father, me, give bro. Me post, give me post baby yes. Fred Van Vliet because he was going crazy. Postpartum Fred Van Vliet was unfuckwithable. Oh, my goodness. Couldn't stop him. Do it for the baby. He was out here <laughs> showing, showing, his, showing his child a good example of what a winner looks there like. Small forward. 2020 LeBron or 2019 Kawhi? LeBron. This is, this is tough. It's LeBron. No, it's not. LeBron. Give me LeBron, LeBron James. Get out of my face. <laughs> it is tough. What do you mean? 20, 2019 Kawhi was special. One yeah, of the 2020 LeBron James is LeBron James, who hasn't lost a step yet, and is having the best defensive season of his career, leading the league in assists. Oh, I said best defensive. He's having a great defensive season, led the league in assists. <laughs> this is not a conversation. It's a conversation. Wait, word? He led short. the league in assists in 20? Yeah, yes. he was a point guard full time that year. Oh, that's crazy. I, I forgot about Listen that. This version of LeBron that. is filthy. I forgot about that. Yeah, he averaged like 10 and 11 assists. It was crazy. Frank Vogel had him defending his ass off, too. It's LeBron James. And the scapegoat to that Tough. man. Mm. <laughs> Power <laughs> forward, Anthony Davis or Pascal Siakam? Pascal Siakam. AD me all day. <laughs> Shout out to Pascal, but goddamn. Yeah, I'll take AD. Obviously, AD. Mark Gasol yeah. or JaVale McGee? 
JaVale McGee. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, no, I'll, I'll take Marcus Hall. <laughs> they traded away Jonas Valanciunas for a reason that year and leveled up so tremendously because of Marcus Hall. So give me Mark. Marcus Hall is so awesome, man. I agree. Shout out, Mark. It's a Mark fucking it shame is. that the Lakers scapegoated him to bring Andre Drummond into the building. I'll never forgive them for that. They made they made Marcus All look like he was a Teletubby. Now maybe he did look like a little bit physically, but still, <laughs> he was so good, man. Piece. They replaced him with Andre. Why Drummond. Why you guys say that? Them. That man did nothing to you, and and you called him a Teletubby. Marcus All's a great player. I was there at his jersey retirement. I'm an, I'm the number one Marcus All. Wait, you were, you were just in Memphis? <laughs> yeah. I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, you just completely made it that scenario. That's crazy. I was about to say, I was like, dang. I need a jersey. A wild for sure. I, would get, I was like, I, I, I thought we were friends. I didn't know you were in Memphis. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. All right, next up. The 2024 Clippers and the 2021 Suns. They all suck. We don't have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, none of them. That's hilarious. <laughs> All right, guess we're not going to talk about it. <laughs> Trade them all. <laughs> he said, how we go bum on bum? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. All right, we got one TikTok left. This video is going to be real simple. We did this last week with Mo, and this time I'm on the hot seat. You two are going to think of a category. You, I'm sure you already communicate with each other. You guys are going to name random players until I can guess what the category is. You ready? Let's if you guys saw last week, Mo was in hell. Put in the blender. I was in hell. <laughs> yeah, we had time I'm returning to favor. Yeah, we had you in Guantanamo. Let's see if you can get me. All right, Mo, you ready? Let's go. So, I am ready. All right, I'll start. Let's yes. Go. Oh, wait. My bad. My oh, bad. Go, go, go with the hook. Go with the hook. All right. The hook is... Guess what category this NBA player is in. All right. Go ahead. All right. <clears throat> First up, Jay Crowder. Mm, players of dreads. Nikola Jokic. <laughs> no, not, not players of dreads. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Butler. Steph Curry. Okay. I was thinking second round picks, then now that is out the door. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, it's not champions. JaVale, JaVale McGee. LeBron James. JaVale McGee. Okay. Mmm. Jalen Brown. Was this NBA players that have made the finals? You're getting you're kinda you're kinda there. Kinda there. Right? Oh, okay, you're you're okay. on the Keep you're going. on the you're on the right track. Teetering. Robert I see the tracks being laid. Robert Williams. He's also made the finals, okay. Hmm. Okay. There we go. Name players. Oh, okay, I got a name. I got a name. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I got a name. There we go. Pat Connington. Pat, Pat Connington. Patrick McCall. Pat, oh my God. These aren't players that just made the finals? It's de- deeper than that? There's, a, there's an added layer to it. Okay, keep going. A little bit more specific. Yeah. All right. Think, think very granular. You said Patrick least. McCall? Yeah, Patrick McCall. Okay. Rajon Rondo. Pascal Siakam. Ooh, okay. Mm. Mikhail Bridges. Man, <coughs> straight players that made final teams. Okay, I gotta think about what, what I gotta think about what the what the rendition is. Keep going. Duncan Robinson. Oh, mm. this is know what this is. I know what this is. Good. This is NBA players who made the finals in the last ten years. So okay. close, so close. The, you're you're in the 2010s. No, 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 no. Right track, right track. Just think more specific. In the last five yeah. years. Yeah. There, there we go. go. Congratulations. <laughs> I was thinking long about racking my brain. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Let's do another one of those games. Let's do it with Donovan on the hot seat this time. Right. That was a little too easy. Honestly, I, I could have got that six guesses earlier. We went too fast. The Mo, I'm going to text you a category. All right, bet. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do it. Put his ass in the blender. You got that text? All right. Let's, let's see if Donovan can do this. It's his turn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to name random NBA I'm players. For the text. Donovan has to guess what category they come from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Josh Hart. Scotty Barnes. Hmm. Mm. Rudy Gobert. Mm. Jared Allen. Anthony Davis. Ooh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Russell Westbrook. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Where are we going with this? <laughs> Josh Hart, Scotty Barnes? Mitchell Robinson. What? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jason Kidd. Mm. Oscar Robertson. Mm. James Harden. Any thoughts? Is this players? Wait, you said, ah, oh, dang, you said Mitchell Robinson. I was thinking players who have had like a triple double or something. Maybe two. <laughs> hmm. This is. Ben Wallace. Ooh. Clyde Drexler. Okay. Y'all are <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> Y'all are ridiculous. Feel my pain. <laughs> Jakob Podol. Is this Ooh. second round? Oh, wait, no. It's not second round picks. It's got parts. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm in the blender right now. This sucks. I don't like this game. Luka Doncic. Luka Doncic. It's not. Dennis Rodman. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Blender. Blender. <laughs> you have to in the coffin. Dennis Rodman. Drummond. I was waiting for that one. I was waiting to say that one. <laughs> Wait, who'd you say? Very telling. I said Andre, said Andre Drummond. Drummond. Is this players who have had 20 rebounds in a game? No. No, it's not that specifically, but you're thinking around the right lines. Is this players who have been <laughs> top 10 in rebounding? Nope, you're getting warm though. Close. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Michael Jordan. Okay, that throws off my rebound. <laughs> Michael Jordan, all right. That throws off my rebound and stuff. Stats don't lie. This play not Jaron Jackson. Are these people who have <laughs> led their team in rebounding? <laughs> it's not that, not that specific. <laughs> what are these just good rebounders? Like, what are we talking about? Yeah, <laughs> yeah there we <laughs> go. Just good rebounders. These players who are good at rebounding. <laughs> what? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it was so simple. <laughs> you said top 20 in rebounding? <laughs> You're trying to hit this head on a horn. Yo, and that's all we have today. <laughs> Mo, people are still here. What should they comment? What they should do is they should go watch the last stream to see our TD3 award show. But after that, what should they comment, Mo? No, you're absolutely right, bro. I was going to say, if they didn't catch that one, tune in TD3 lives every Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Facts. But that's not a comment. So what should they comment after they do that? Tune in. What the fuck? That's what they should do. Let's ingrate it into their minds. All right, next person. Donovan, what should they comment? <laughs> you're not about to grind. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that tells me. We're out. Co comment, comment that. C comment Mo's not about the grind. Yeah, comment Mo's not about the grind. I don't know why. That's so backwards. <laughs> <laughs> See we'll y'all later. later.